Hello, humans of the internet, and welcome to a side quest with the Gallant Horde. Today with me, a lot of lovely people who are definitely, definitely not about to die. This is not what happens in this stream. This is not what we do. And you can see in their faces that they are obviously very uh, confident about that. So today, our people are going to go deal with the family reunion, basically. But first... Let's talk a little bit about everything that will happen with the channel. Uh, we still have some subscribe goal. Uh, there are a few classes that have not been taken care of by the birds of a feather yet. So uh, if you haven't subscribed, go on ahead and uh, we will get voted in the Toaster Dogger for the next uh, classes that are going to be taken care of. That's going to be fun. Next, uh, we are still doing donation goals to up Adam's rig. Uh, we are roughly 425 uh, New Zealand dollars away from the goal. But in addition to the new things for the rig, there's going to be a familiar game. And that could be super fun. Uh, next week, there's going to be the 24 hours final. Oberance, Obliteration, Comeuppance, whatever have you, is next week, so do not miss it. It is going to be huge and will probably require a very well-deserved coma right afterwards. Uh, before we get started, uh, we, as per usual, have a giveaway. And the first one today is going to be, as it has been for the last few weeks, months even, Coming from level one gamers is going to be the Mace of Healing. So, oh. as per usual, exclamation point shiny thing, unit drill. Uh, we will pick the winner at the break, <clears throat> whenever that may be. All right. So, without further ado, let's introduce people who need no introductions. Starting with Will. Hey guys, I'm Will, and I play Adrek Brooklady, the half elf fighter paladin. And I have COVID, so bear with me if I'm a bit slow today. Don't you worry; it just gives me a, a chance to actually do something for once. Uh, Mike. Hi everybody, I'm Mike. I'm going to be playing Artur Galvins, the uh, frost giant fighter warlock. Wonderful, Noah. <laughs> My name is Noah. Uh, I will be playing Hayden Forst, the human fighter ranger. Okie dokes. Ranger fighter. Ranger fighter. Shauna Lee. Hello, I am Shauna Lee. Not that I needed an introduction according to Lionel. None. I will be playing Indigo, the fey moth rogue warlock of Titania. Nice. Jean-Luc. I am Kyle and I am playing Jean-Luc Tissant. Um, this is my fault. <laughs> <laughs> this is all my fault. Yeah, enough said. This is your fault. And finally, Kit. Hi, I'm Kit and I'm going to be playing Warwin Starshine, who is a winter Aladrin sorcerer with uh, silver dragon ancestry, hence the silver wings. 
All right. Well, now that everyone is ready and accounted for, uh -huh. let us get started, you guys. So. May I ask a question? You may, absolutely. What's our potion of resistance today? Oh, you are absolutely right. Let me roll for that. Uh, today's resistance is going to be radiant. Ooh. Thank you. My pleasure. Which reminds me that some people are getting potions right now, apparently. Uh, I'd beg you got a potion. All good. Thanks, Chet. Okay. Well, you are being led to the throne room. As you have been so many times before, it feels a little bit different today. The lady doesn't have a very fancy dress. She has just a regular close to the body dress with some hats, kind of reminiscing of a beret. And she's awaiting you guys. Oh, well. Hello. Well, today is going to be different, isn't it? Oui, madame. He, uh, he did a bit. And how... Are you feeling good about that? We've got as strong a plan as ever. We will do our best to either be uh, peaceful about it in some degree or take as few casualties as possible. I mean... No casualty at all would be a plus, but... That is preferred, we. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I will... imagine yes? getting a piece of jewelry now. She hasn't been carrying it around. No, she has not. So, and, and, and maybe, you know, in a box or something, so she doesn't have to touch it. Mm. It, is, it is currently stored in a very finely crafted wooden box with... Uh, small lines of uh, platinum on the side. It's beautiful. Okay. okay. Is it the same recall word as normal? Mm, it is at the moment, unless you have a better plan. No, no, no. Just double checking. <laughs> no, it should I be the same. good thing that works. Absolutely. I mean. Do not get around and yell it to the top of your lungs, obviously, but I have an inkling that they probably will know that it comes from our neck of the woods. Yeah. Worth pointing out, there is a seventh person in the room. Um, not someone that the horde has ever seen before. It is just what looks like a regular autumn Aladrin. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, Marwyn is in her autumn... Colors also. Does anyone else have a different appearance? Indigo is looking like Indigo, but instead of purple, everything is red. <laughs> okay. It looks perfectly normal because he does not have the capability to change himself without using his concentration. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, hey. the seven. The seventh person will speak up and say, Well, really, to talk, did you really think I would let them go alone? Gosh. These fools? No. I'll be there too. I'll chaperone. It'll be fine. Of course it will. I'm counting on you to be our eyes and ears there. <laughs> and to hopefully bring everybody back. If not, I think I know who I would hold responsible. Our Tekken looks directly at Jean-Luc, accusingly. <laughs> Very well. Um, it's also worth noting that Indigo would be passing off a very yeah. mundane-looking journal to Morwen. Ah. Okay. And what... Uh, this is something that's for Henri, right? This is, that... this is for Henri. Uh, it's a spy's journal. Where did I get it? Where's Where did you get it? You yeah. procured it in order to show your loyalty to the two songs. Okay. That's, yeah. Well, it seems she hangs you out have... Well enough. You should be able to figure this out. I'm with the Indigo enough. <laughs> it seems you have one hell of a plan. 
This should be interesting. Mm hmm. Okay. In that case, unless you have additional questions, I will send you on your way. She just Merci. claps your, her hand and you disappear. Only to reappear in the outskirts of a little forest. Not a lot of trees, it's not a very thick one. And you can definitely see you are at the border of a path going up and up. And you are a little ways away, but in the distance you can definitely see the shape of a castle. Around it, all the trees have been removed, just to have, you know, clear view, apparently. You are, at the very least, free to decide what part of the castle you would like to approach from. At the moment, you are too far to have been noticed by anyone, but depending on what you do. And depending on how uh, Arto stands, this might not last long. Yeah. So, <laughs> what do you do? It looked to Jean Luc. It was Jean -Luc invisible. Is first, going to give a hair toss to make sure their hair goes back to their natural red color to not mm. stand out any more than they need to. Very well. Jean Luc will stand and just kind of look at the castle for a moment and take a deep breath and say welcome home everyone welcome to Avalyn it feels Morgan. familiar to you it is an odd feeling when you see it it's you know it you kind of you kind of welcome it but on the other hand it brings so many bad things to the surface that you're feeling a little bit torn at the moment but it is here I believe moving at all, the best option for you would be going right to the front gate, uh, just as if you were regular attendant of the court. Everyone else, I am hopeful the side uh, entrance, uh, let's see, it will be about Jean-Luc starts parsing, or parsing along the line. Um, he's remembering, they're remembering from their time there some rather loose stones that they used to sneak in and out of on the... Are we on the western or eastern side? You would be uh, at the main entrance on the western side. Yeah, so probably on the western side of the wall. He'd be looking for a place that he used to sneak in and out of regularly. The, the western side of the, the castle would be the main entrance. Ah, okay. The way, this, the way this is shaped is you have the main entrance on the west and the castle kind of continues and ends in a semicircle on the eastern side uh, with the wall that is basically behind the throne room. He Let me actually show you the shape so you can oh, have a little idea. Does Team Sneak want to go ahead before we approach the front gate? Or do you want us to go in as a distraction so you can do your thing? Distraction would most likely be the best option. So this, yeah. is, it, this is the shape of Chateau Toussaint. You would be coming from the west. From here. So Jean-Luc would remember in this garden particular. A... or or think they could get in somewhere through here or around here. You know that from this place, if you were to um, climb up, you would be able to reach the sort of gallery on the first floor that sort of overlooks the throne room and leads to various rooms and studies. Okay. All right. So uh, Jean-Luc would want to lead Team Stealth towards the south end then. Right. Ad Beg will uh Ad Beg's gonna slip into the ethereal plane and say something before he does like give me a signal when it's go time. Uh, and it's then he'll just follow you guys. Yeah. Okay, so you you go on full ghost. Okay. Indigo is invisible, but uh Artagon, because he has natural true sight, I would assume. Mm-hmm. 
uh, he can see them, but even people who have the spell True Sight can't see Indigo. So, uh, if anybody needs to know where Indigo is, look to Artagon. Okay. So, let's position you guys. So, Team Stealth at the south uh, would be Jean-Luc, Artbeck in ghost form, right? Who else? Yep. Uh, Hayden and... Uh, Hayden and Indigo, I believe. Hayden and Indigo. Yes, indeed. All right. Which would lead more when at the main entrance with Artor. Big Artor. Okay. Hey, can I hit the ride, buddy? <laughs> absolutely. Morwen's absolutely riding in on his shoulders. So Morwen's just like riding on Artor's shoulder, like this is how she travels. Like she wants to make a big impression <laughs> when they come up to the gate. Okay. <clears throat> So, let's let's have a look at Team Stealth for just a second. Right now, the distance is not very respected. It's just that these are the boundaries of the map. But I assume sure. that you would be coming and using as many trees to hide yourself. Could I get a stealth check from everyone uh, with advantage for Indigo and Arbuck? You don't need to. You are a ghost. It <laughs> will. Cast pass without trace once they're separated. So we can get so a So everyone really is a everyone on team stealth gets a plus ten. Alright. So Jean Luc. Uh thirty. Indigo. Thirty nine. Hayden. Thirty. Damn, okay. <laughs> You are shadows. Nobody heard you. You were never there. You arrive to a point where you are just at the outskirts of the beautifully decorated gardens. And you can very easily see now that there is a number of guards just walking about and staying near the southern entrances. Although you do have roughly a hundred feet between where you are right now within the trees and uh, the castle. All in, in between is completely out in the open. Are the guards making rounds or are they standing sentinel at a door? They seem more like sentries. Hayden has a potential solution for that. Uh, all the way back from the first mission he went on, he has one casting of sleep per day. So if they, depending on uh, their health, they can just go out for a minute. I wouldn't. Knowing who these guards belong to, they're probably elves, right? Oh, they... yeah. Give me a perception check. I uh, uh, can do that. My passive perception is 25, and I have rolled a yeah, 20, no, they, dirty 20. Yeah, they definitely, they definitely have elven traits, for yeah, sure. So. <laughs> so that doesn't work. Um, Sunday. Alright, if we may need to just get rid of one of them, not decently, just a little... Uh, while while you are exploring your options... Let's go to the front gate. Arthur carrying more when on your shoulders or in your arms. Uh -huh. I do not know how you want to. Like maybe <laughs> baby cradle or something. I don't know. Uh, mm -hmm. You have a few hundred feet before you reach the main entrance. Is there something you would like to do before you proceed? No, I'm just going to ask Arthur to walk straight up till somebody engages with us. Okay. Too easy. Okay. I'm like so, we belong there. Okay, not a problem. So you do get closer. And reaching the... Hmm. Reaching just a few, few hundred feet before, 
uh, the two of the guards that are on each side of the main entrance are perking up. They uh -huh. seem obviously startled by the huge shape of uh, Frost Giant. Uh -huh. And one of them just dares to, stay, to stand up front and says, Halt! Who goes there? Or to stop and just stare quietly. Mm -hmm. I would like to speak with the uh, Lord and Lady of the house. I see. Do you have an audience? I'm waiting for one. Could you go see if they're available? Uh, give me a pers uh, persuasion check. <clears throat> Jesus. <laughs> 17. 17. Okay. That's a very low roll for me. <laughs> a 17 is a low roll. God damn. A 13. I rolled a that is, 4. <laughs> that, that is somewhat sad, but uh, yeah, on the other hand, it's very impressive. <laughs> hmm, I see. Uh, let me see what I can do. I will come back to you in, in a short amount of time. He... <laughs> Yes. Freely given. He nods and goes through the main door and you can see from where you are. First of all, the building is pristine. It is beautiful. It is very well kept. And um, give me a perception check. Both of us? Have... Uh, you can do both, yes. <clears throat> Let's see, where's my... Uh. Perception? Perception, yes. Well. Okay. Eleven. Okay, yeah, no, never mind. Okay, never mind. He goes inside. It wasn't a sound based perception check, was it? Sorry? It wasn't listening for something, was it? No, that was very visual. Okay. <laughs> okay. So you, you remain like that for a little bit. Yeah, As... I just look around the board. Okay. You can see that the guard is definitely keeping a very close eye on you. He mm -hmm. does not seem very safe at the moment. But uh, yeah, he's definitely watching you. Mm -hmm. You can see though, as he opened the door to get inside, uh, there seem to be people already in mm. just waiting apparently okay team stealth now that you have scouted the place a little bit what do you do i think it's uh, just gonna go straight through the wall straight to the wall yes you will okay well in that case give me one second to reveal a very irregular shape. I will not make fun of Jax anymore about <laughs> that. Oops. That's that's that. <laughs> da, 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 da. It's funny. The stream cannot see it, I don't think. Uh, but Artagan's token? Hilarious. <laughs> Great. Oh my gosh, I didn't see it until you just said that. <laughs> great. Fantastic. Beautiful. Outstanding. I had to. I fucking had to. Okay. Outback. What you can see inside. First of all, uh, on the throne and at his side, you can see the very regal shape of Henri and Juliette Toussaint. They are currently in, in, in the process of listening to a person speak. That person seems to be elven in nature. Uh, from what you can hear, it's grievances, problems with neighbors, something very inconsequential. But they do hold a very, you know, imposing face and very... I mean, smiling, very relaxed overall. Uh, you can see that 
currently Henri is just walking about and sort of pacing while Juliette is just very keenly listening to everything that is happening. Is there something else you see while inside? I would also mention that you see that those stairs over there seem to lead to the gallery that I was mentioning earlier that is on the second floor. Cool. Um, Art Big will just hold fast and be not more than 30 feet away from Henri at any given time. Okay, so you stay very, uh, you stay very close to him. Okay, not a problem. What about the rest of Team Stealth? Is there a patio that's like overlooking the garden or anything like that? Like a second floor mm. windows or? Well, give me a perception check. Yeah. Uh, passive is twenty five. Rolled is a dirty twenty. Okay. Because rogues. <laughs> yeah, because indigo. So, uh, what you can see from here is that there is a little walkway on the second floor, just overlooking everything. Let me actually show you. There you go. So, the top of the rooms is kind of shaped like a half dome. Mm. And all that section over there is overlooking the gardens and just out in the open. Okay. Indigo is going to fly to about this position here. Is this a door or is it a window? It is a door. Okay. Um, my passive investigation is 31. Mm -hmm. Rolled okay. is uh, 26. Not bad. Right. It does um, not. I want. Yeah. It does not what? No, no, no. no. You want what? <laughs> Uh, I was just in inspecting it, seeing if I see any runes, glimmers, locks. Nothing. Um, you do see some runes on, on top of it. Give me an arcana check. Okay. Totally something I'm good at. <laughs> okay, that's a 10. That's a 10, yeah. You are not necessarily adept with it. You see that there is a tiny bit of magic on that door. It doesn't seem very powerful. And the few runes that you recognize seem to evocate, like, transmutation. For the kids at home, what spell, what school of magic is that? Uh, the one that turns stuff into other stuff. Ah, okay, okay. <laughs> I will... Because I do not have the Magnificent Cheat Sheet. I keep saying <laughs> yeah. that I should print it, and I never do. Yeah, I thought so. That's like what would turn you into different things. So, yeah. um... Indigo is going to... Uh, make sure that they're low. Is the, the balustrade, like the, the, the patio kind of barrier, it, are there holes in it, or is it a solid wall? Uh, you mean like the the outside part, like the the what what part exactly? Yeah, yes, that that exact part. Like these. okay, yeah. No, this is just a, a small railing of wood, just to prevent people from falling, mostly. Yeah. So Indigo will land and crouch, and I'm gonna roll stealth. Okay, let me just position some Indigo right there. Yeah. There you go. I'll let you position yourself. And that will be... Do I still have Pass Without a Trace on me? Uh, yeah, because uh, it's, it's like when it was radius. cast. Yes. It was, uh, it, it's from when he was cast, no? If I'm not mistaken. Uh, I think it's an aura. Oh, it's an aura. Never mind then. Okay. Um. So in that case, I only have a 33 for stealth. <laughs> 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 only, uh, only she says. Such an indigo thing to say. Indigo will then pull out a little piece of uh, parchment that they have. They're gonna unroll it. 
they'll mash it between their fingers and like little sun not that anybody can see it until the magic is there but uh sunspots come from the scroll mm -hmm. and they blow it on the door and cast dispel magic okay the runes glimmer for just half a second and shut down it seems like the ma whatever magic was on that door is no longer and then a little hand will pop up from <laughs> from the patio and they'll kind of just wiggle their fingers before going invisible again. Okay. Uh, could I get a perception check from the rest of Team Stealth, please? Uh, sans Artbeck, because you are a ghost. Perception, perception. I'm good at that, right? Oh, yeah. 21. 21, okay. 29. Okay. Uh, yeah. yeah, you definitely noticed uh, Indigo's hand just wiggling above the railing. What Aiden, are you going to do I about can... it? Aiden, I can get you there if you like. Should... I may be able to get there myself. How far is it to the balcony? Uh, it's roughly, I would say, like 20 feet. 20 feet up. 20 feet. 20 feet up, so I would need to be, what, about 10 feet from the balcony to get up there? Or... I would say so, yeah. All right. Sorry, I'm mixing, like, colonial units with the Pythagoras, and that, that's a lot for me. <laughs> yeah. Just just don't. Just add horizontal plus vertical. It's so yeah. much easier. <laughs> yeah. Um, do I think I could get with it, get close enough to... Misty step 30 feet up to it without entering an open sight line. Mm, that's going to require you. I would say give me an insight check for you to, to figure out when the guard is not necessarily looking. Is it just me? I don't see the guards on the map anymore. We're, uh, we're on no, the, because we're on you're the second on, level. You're on the second level yeah. right now. That's why. Oh, you just that, is, okay. that is a twenty-eight on the insight. Yeah, you you definitely see that one of the guards is a little bit um, bored, and at some point he's just playing with like a rock on the floor, and kind of trips. The rock falls to the side. He tries to catch it quickly, and you're like, "That's my cue." And poof, you're in, and Zing. I would position you. Probably next to Adigo. There you go. Seeing that, um, Jean-Luc will prepare to do the same thing. Artagan will grab him and say, no, no, I got this. And bamf them both in the same manner. Okay. Could I get, though, uh, stealth check now from uh, Jean-Luc and Artagan? Okay, Jean Luke's is nineteen. Don't forget that extra ten. Yep. Twenty-nine. Okay. Our tagins is thirty-two. Okay. You feel like nobody noticed you at the moment. While you were doing so, Moen, in front of the castle, the guard comes back in, comes back out. He's like, mm -hmm. okay, uh, uh, the lord and lady may have some uh, availability for you. Uh, you mm -hmm. will have to uh, wait in line, obviously. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what to do about your bodyguard, but I believe that he will require to stay outside. That's but fine. but f fear not, uh, you are very, very well protected. And he just points s somewhere at the door. Um, would it be possible to have my audience out here? Or I could have my guard with me? Oh, no, no, this is, this is very against protocol. Uh, no, 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 I'm afraid not. Uh, I have had very specific instructions from Monsieur, from Monsieur Toussaint. And I, I cannot really uh, allow that. Uh, my deepest apologies. I am under very strict orders. 
Uh, just that I'm carrying something very valuable for the lady of the house. Oh, I, I completely understand. Uh, and I, I need to hand it to her personally. Oh, you, you will see them personally. That, that is absolutely no, no issue. You will unfortunately have to wait your turn, but uh, you will see them in person and you will definitely be able to give them... Exactly. I'm sorry? How long is that going to take? Uh, it depends at the moment. Uh, I, there, there is only two people ahead of you. So I have a feeling that uh, it should take no more than uh, 15 minutes. 15? 15, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He opens the doors I, wide for you I, to get in. I want to like, open the box and show him the, the item. Mm -hmm. I think she's going to want to see this. He looks at it. Mm. I, I I agree. It seems in very good taste, and uh, it seems very much in line in what uh, Madame Toussaint usually uh, likes. Uh, so yes, I, I think you are absolutely right. Is there a way I can bump myself up in the line a little bit? Uh, to be completely. Um, uh, Frank with you. Um, I, I, I do not uh, know you and mm -hmm. at the moment I am very much more uh, scared of Monsieur Toussaint than I am of you. So at the moment, no, I, I, I am afraid you are going to have to respect protocol. I have a little something for Monsieur as well. Wonderful. So they are going to enjoy even more your company once you get to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, bear, bear, bear in mind, bear in mind, uh, my lady, that I am in no way suggesting that you will not see them. You will definitely see them today. They have availability for that. It's just that you are going to wait. I just, I think that they would appreciate it if you bumped me up in the line. I think they're going to want to see what I have to give them. Give a persuasion check. Come on, dice. <laughs> More would like to speak to the supervisor. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm channeling that and it's making me feel icky. Um, <laughs> damn it. 16. 16. <laughs> so bad let, let me get back inside and I will see what I can do. I need to, 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 to start to uh, run, run inside. As he opens the door, how high are the ceilings inside? Can I tell? Uh, By chance? They're roughly, I would say, 15 to 20 the door the door rate itself is 15 feet high roughly mm -hmm. uh inside it seems taller probably around 20 to 25 feet okay uh art bag. inside you can see one of the guard just like gently knocking onto the the the, the main door this one <coughs> and uh Henri is what now? Uh, I am sorry, sir, but the lady at the, the, the entrance is very, very uh, insisting. She apparently is bearing gifts that uh, you and uh, my lady would probably uh, appreciate, according to her. Uh, she would like to have an audience uh, f faster. Uh, what should I tell her? Was I not clear in my instructions? Uh, y y yes, you were, sir. But uh, she seems very insisting, and it seems a uh, very beautiful object. Let me ask you again. Was I not clear in my instructions? I, I apologize, sir. I, I am very <laughs> sorry. I will uh, make sure that uh, she knows that you will receive her as soon as possible. My deepest apologies. What is your name again? Uh, Francois, sir. Francois. Francois. Just, just know that I have a good memory. Y yes, sir. Yes, sir. My apologies, sir. And he gets out and rushes back to the entrance. So, uh, I'm afraid that this is not going to be possible. Uh, I appreciate the urgency and I made sure that it was uh, well transmitted to uh, the Lord of the House. But uh, mm -hmm. you're going to have to wait a tiny bit. My deepest apologies. Very well. I'm going to send a message. Wait, do I still have a message? 
That is a good Let me question. Make sure I can check before I write it. Um, yeah, I'm going to send a message to Artur. Mm -hmm. um, I can reduce your size if you want to get in. I have a way in. Okay. Artur will yes, look sir. down at the, the guard. <laughs> he looks uncomfortable. Would it be better if you were eye level with me so I'm, you're looking at me and not up at me? Uh, I mean, this would probably be a good idea, but I am not sure that I could fit inside the castle anymore then. How tall are the ceilings in there? Uh, I would say probably between seven and nine meters. So if I can get through the door, I can fit in there. Uh, yes, probably a little uncomfortably, but you could probably fit in there, yes. Uh, if I may ask, is your size a result of uh, a magic or a spell? I am a giant. My apologies, I did not mean to be insensitive. Uh, it was just to make sure that you were not uh, surprised by the, the archway. And he points at the archway. Give me a perception check. Uh. Uh, perception check. Uh, 24. 24. As he points to the archway, you can see that uh, where the door kind of meets the wall, there is this faint line of red going all around the stones. And you can clearly see now that what you thought was some sort of a very thin, extremely thin veil as a curtain or something is non-material. It seems like crossing the threshold makes you go through a very thin layer of magic. Preventing unwanted magic to come in, huh? I mean, uh, in these dark times, it is better to be a little cautious, as you might imagine. But if this is not a result of magic, then you have nothing to worry about. Mm. Well, getting me inside would require magic. Ah. And, as you say, dark times and all. Indeed. I can't rightly let my... Mm. I'm loath to call her a client at this point. More like a friend, I guess. Friend is fine. He, I can, can't can, can you give me an insight check? Mm -hmm. Me? Uh, Arthur. Can you Arthur. give me an insi insight check? Yeah. Uh, 22. Uh, that's a natural 20 for 22. Nice. The, the guard seems genuinely puzzled at the concept of being friends with your employer. This makes no sense to him whatsoever. Uh, when you've traveled long enough and been paid as well as, I, as I've been paid for my services, sometimes money blurs the lines, but worry not about it. I can't just let her go. Because as you say yourself, dark times and all. Yes. Is there maybe a place that we could meet with the lord and lady uh perhaps in an area where they still control everything but my size wouldn't be a problem a courtyard somewhere nice maybe a tea party maybe some sandwiches you it's a nice day after all you hear the faintest you hear the faintest growl coming from his stomach at the mention of sandwiches he's like um this would probably need to be uh, <coughs> decided with the lord of the house but i assume that there might be a way to uh, for you to stay at the very least in the in the garden in the back that is uh that has a door that leads inside the throne room so maybe you can uh, that way stay within visual range of your clients slash friends i but this would be a conversation between uh, your lady and uh, my lord. But I, 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 would, I don't see a problem with it per se. Can, can I ask you a question, though? Of if course. you don't mind me prying. Um, are you hiring? 
Is she hiring or am I hiring? Oh, she seems fine. I I have good references. <laughs> Such uh, as? Uh, well, all the people that uh, I served before Monsieur Toussaint uh, are still alive to this day, so I am very proud of that. What kind of skills do you bring to the table? Oh, I am quite a skilled uh, fighter, and I am qu quite good with a bow. Any magic or just mundane? Uh, yes. I hate this more. <laughs> I mean, uh, I I think I bring more of a martial expertise to the table. It has its place, yeah. It does, thank you for noticing that. Meanwhile, upstairs, Team Stealth. You <clears throat> just dispelled the door and people joined you. You are quiet and discreet as a mouse. What do you do? Is Artagan with us? Yes. Uh, Artagan is, yes. Yes. Looking so uh, somewhat less bright than usual. Yeah, like in he's... his hair. He, he, he's kind of... Well, playing... he's just autumnal today, right? So... Yeah, he's just, but even then, he kind of acts like a gecko on the wall and trying to just merge with the background, yeah. which works way more than it should. <laughs> uh, well, then there's Indigo pressing right up into him to talk to him. <laughs> Who's invisible to everybody else, so our tag is discomfort won't make sense to the other two standing there. I mean, okay. I, have I have mundane blindside of 10 feet. So you'll, uh, is blind sight yeah. divination? Uh, it is not. Um, I think there are some divination spells that can give you blind sight, but this is from a fighting style, so it is uh, mundane. So you'll feel a, a shimmy. <laughs> <laughs> it's just indigo in our tagon's ear. Just so, if like, uh, we wanted to go in, maybe they should be invisible now. Oh, I see what you're getting at. Yes, well, so I only have to do two of them. Easy enough. All right, we've got about a minute for this, so be quick, you two. Uh, and he'll cast Greater Invisibility on Hayden and Jean-Luc. Because we have already very meticulously gone over the floor plan of what the chateau looks like, I'm assuming we all know what door we're actually going for. Um, yeah, yeah, you would know. Um, the main door that you're looking for would probably be this one, as it leads yeah. to the, the study area. Most of what uh, Jean-Luc remembers is that this whole area down is more rooms, as mm -hmm. it is the southern area, although the southern area is more reserved for servants, the few that are living in uh but yeah the main area that seems to be like the study is over there okay um we're invisible and we stealth into the door pass uh, so without trace is still up and for uh, detection purposes it is uh uh we do not leave behind any tracks or traces of our passage, and it might just be flavor text, but it does say a veil of shadows in silence. I don't know if it actually muffles our footsteps because it doesn't mention in the mechanical part of the spell, but okay, yeah, I, I, I could see that. What it's worth, I could see that. However, oh. and with advantage because you're invisible. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> However, as you open the door, the guard that is right here perks up. What the hell? I thought I closed this. And he starts to walk towards the door that just mysteriously opened. Yep. Um, how high are the ceilings? Uh, the ceilings, uh, you still have another 15 feet, roughly. Uh, oh yeah, Indigo slips right in and flies up. Okay. So you are now... Uh, do you stay up, like... 
above the central part overlooking the throne room or like where no, are you standing I'm up gonna, exactly? I'm going to fly like above the walkway. Okay. No problem. I'll let you position yourself. Yep. What about the rest of y'all? Uh, I'm going to slip in the door mm -hmm. and uh, mantle, like, basically hang from the railing, hoping that no one has a mundane blindsight. Because I also have non detection, kind of. It's an item, but non detection on me. So divination based. Okay. Could I get could, could, could I get a mundane acrobatics check, please? <laughs> Can I ask for athletics instead? <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. That is a seventeen. Seventeen. Okay, yeah. You and hang... I have a climb speed for what that's worth. I I would position you here so that you are on the other side of the railing, just like dangling from there. Uh. <laughs> Artbeg, looking up, you just see feet. It's just like no, you don't see feet, but you, no. you know, you get the feeling that somebody is doing something stupid. Uh, what about Jean Luc and Artagan? Uh, you should have control of the Artagan token, by the way. Hooray! Um, let's see if I can do this again. He's getting closer, by the way. Yes. Cool. Uh, he is going to. Uh, let me do math here real quick. <laughs> He's going to wait for the guard to get to the door and then face step them here. So I'll let you move the guard. Okay. He reaches there and it gives a look outside. Huh. And then they move. <laughs> They move after they're cleared to... Must, must have been the wind. And he closes the door again. And keeping pace with them so that they don't leave the Pass Without Trace or Hayden will just shimmy along the... the okay. I mean, Go, going full Lara Croft on the, on the uh, side of the wall. Yeah. Hide and Croft, okay. All right. You are now in the corner. You have uh, a door just south of you. Another one here, and a big one here. We're going uh, for this door, right? Yes. No, I thought it was this one. This one. You would know, uh, Jean-Luc, having grown there, that those three doors lead into the same room. Oh, uh, all three? It is a big-ass study. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, with Artagan's true sight, does he see any fuckery on this door? No, the door itself seems to be pretty standard. Uh, you do... Uh, give me a perception check with... Uh, or investigation check with Artagan's stats. Um, investigation... Is... Is that intelligence or wisdom? It is intelligence. 24. 24, okay. Uh, yeah, he does get a whiff of a few rooms across the door, um, all across the wood actually, but they are very, very thin and very faint. Uh, he is going to dispel that door. Okay, that door is no longer magic. The room just like flicker for a bit and don't. And. Uh, the guard is the guard still moving because Inda goes up at the roof. So the the guard is about to come back up. We are the, the, the other one over there is all. like the other one over there is like. So what was it? I don't know, just the wind, I guess. Shh, 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 the boss is gonna hear us. Just come back. Speaking of, uh, flushed against this wall so the guard can get past him without touching him in his invisible state. Mm -hmm. uh, does Jean Luc? Happen to see anybody of great importance? From where you are, you can see down uh, Henri and Juliette. Oh. Oh. Cool, 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 they cool, are cool, just cool, cool. a mere few meters away from you, cool, cool, cool. attending to whatever social function they are attending. Cool, 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 cool. Indigo's gonna 
budge <laughs> by the door mm -hmm. and with a with hopefully this works uh if it is locked they're gonna sleight of hand 34 this this door and try to open it 34 okay mark my words i'm going to fucking murder you one day <laughs> I'm very easy to kill. I'm only good at out of combat stuff, oh, you guys. Oh, oh, how I appreciate those words. Uh, yeah, so the door is definitely unlocked with nay a click. Um, I, and then I'm going to try to very, very stealthily, mm -hmm. which would be a 40 to stealth. <laughs> I'm going to try to slip in the door, like, silently. Just. I would consider that very stealthily indeed. So, <laughs> as you open the door, uh, you can see rows and rows of books. So many of them. Everywhere. You can see comfortable couches. You can see a very, very elegant uh, piece of um, carpet on the floor. And do you slip in the door? I go in. Okay. As you go in, uh, you can definitely see uh, all those all those books. And let me show you the area. There it is. Ah. But as you reach there, you just hear a voice saying, <laughs> Followed by the sound of the door slamming behind you. Uh, was it audible or was it in my mind? It was very audible and it came from that corner. And as you look there, uh, you can see a woman in a very beautiful dress currently reading a book. Uh, you can see Juliette Toussaint. Mm. I think that it's time to go back to what's happening in the throne room. <laughs> it actually is. Morwen. Hi. You, you have been invited to go wait inside the main, uh, the main foyer here. Uh, one of the guards came back with um, a cup of tea and some biscuits. Uh-huh. Do you take it? Uh, I thought we were going to go to the garden so my giant can accompany me. Oh, this this will be discussed with the Lord of the House first. The the guard assumed that it would not be a problem, but this will still need to be cleared with uh, Lord oh. Henry, of course. Uh, 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 this tea is freely given, of course. Mm -hmm. You can see on the couch oh. next to you... Uh, I shall drink it. You can see on the on the couch next to you is a beautiful Eladrian man, probably in his early forties, but it's hard to say. And uh -huh. he's just waiting and just tapping his arm a little bit, saying, "I do not know you yet. You are not from here, are you?" No, I travel quite a bit. What is that like? <laughs> It can be exhausting. Uh, I would I would assume so. It must be also very lonely, isn't it? I have travel companions. I'm sure you do. My deepest apologies. I completely forgot my manners. My name is Serge. It's very nice to meet you. You didn't call me Noreen. Nori. Give me a Maybe that for you, shall we? <laughs> Could I get a deception check for this one? Call me Noreen. Noreen is your actual word, the name? Oh no, he can't call you. Yeah, okay, the phrasing. You know what? Okay, yeah. I'll allow it. Okay. Uh, in, in that case, I will definitely call you like that. What's his name, Serge? Serge. Uh huh. I will call you like that as often as I possibly could. Enchanté, Serge. Oh my god, your accent is exquisite. 
I, I am sorry. I am a little bit forward. I'm just in dire need of conversation. Are well, you here to see the Lord and Lady today? I happen to be, yes. I am uh, dealing with a very complicated contract and I would assume somebody of influence would probably help me spin things along. Well, if you let me go before you, maybe I can sweeten the pot a little bit because I bring them gifts. Aha. Uh -huh. But on the other okay. hand, on the other hand, if mm. you go before me, they will not be able to see me, for they will still be blinded by your beauty. That would I be a shame. Is the door still open? Am I able to hear this conversation? Yes, you can. <laughs> Definitely. You have no problem. From, from outside, just a... <laughs> oh. Oh my god, that is fascinating. You have the most amazing pet. What's his name? He keeps I just call him my favorite giant. Very nice to meet you, my favorite giant. Now, yeah. Now, so you would speak in my favor, in my name. I would. I would. Hmm. I can be very persuasive, Serge. How persuasive? Tell you what. Persuade me of something. Sell me something. Mm -hmm. I have a very rare item for the lady that is going to make her very happy. And I also have some information for the Lord that will make him very happy. They will be in a good mood. That is... That is tempting. I will uh -huh. not lie. Can, give me a persuasion check with advantage. Come on, dice. <laughs> okay, that's decent. 31. 31. <laughs> Let's have a compromise, Noreen. Mm, I'm listening. They, they are usually very happy to see me anyway. But mm. I could always use oh, a yeah. little... So... Mm -hmm. How about I let you go in front and mm -hmm. in addition to making them happy, would you make me happy and accept an invitation to dinner? That would make me just so I can't even describe how, how that would make me feel. This is, this is turning out to be such a good day. He uh, grabs your hand if you let her, if you let him. Mm -hmm. He drops a small kiss and just let gets up off the couch and invites you to sit at his spot. I warmed it for you. I appreciate you so much, Serge. This ah, is going to be wonderful. It is, it is. For now, sit at my place. Oh. They will call upon you when it's time. And mm -hmm. I mean... I cannot wait for us to have to. I hope don't do, do not worry. I know many places where we can be very comfortable and if I may be so bold, as mm. long as I have a face, you will always have a place to sit. <laughs> he just steps outside <laughs> and starts just looking at the leaves. What a lovely offer. <laughs> You're gonna pass out. A few minutes pass <gasps> as uh, a very young Eladrin comes out of the throne room and gets out. And one of the guards is like, uh, next, please. Mormon's gonna stand. Yes. And I believe that there is a request. Uh, so my giant may join us. 
perhaps in the in the garden. Uh, the, I will make sure to relay that as I introduce you to uh, the Lord of the House. Um, wh what name should I announce? Noreen. Noreen, okay. Uh, please uh, follow me. Uh -huh. He leads you inside the, the main throne room. And uh -huh. it is very, very elegant here. You can see beautiful like shining armor on the side decorative ones and paintings on the wall the the half dome gives a sense of almost um, church-like ambience but with more elegance and finely crafted things and on the throne you can see Henri and Juliette just looking at you uh -huh. ah. I'm gonna do some kind of Courtly, courtesy, courtesy type, you know, thing. Okay. <clears throat> Meanwhile, part of Team Stealth, Shanlia will be with you <laughs> right uh, in a moment. I so can. I, I will <laughs> gladly wait my turn. All is well. <laughs> Nothing bad can happen, right? So, Jean-Luc and Hayden and Artega, what are you doing? The door just slammed behind us, yeah? Yeah, like, like literally in front of you, actually. You did not go in, the door opened just enough for Indigo to get in. And the moment she went in, you just heard those words. Okay. Because he's passed, and pff, the door closed. Aiden will climb back over, over the banister, back onto the little balcony, and... Uh... Okay. Keep in mind that you are still just a few feet away from the guards. You are just heavily discreet, yeah. but you are still within range of them. Yeah. Um, I'm just gonna uh, g give a look to Artigan that's like, what do we do here? Oh, that's right, because he can see us. Because I, I, cause he can see us and I, oh wait, and I, I know where he is. <laughs> oh yeah, right. Because I have blindsight. Yes. <laughs> He's just kind of like, oh, yeah. He gives a look that no one can see him. Fuck, should I know? <clears throat> um, Jean Luc is going to look at the door behind them. Mm hmm. So, is that one, does that one have some runes on it? Uh, it does. S similar ones, actually. Cool, 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 cool. <laughs> you can give me an arcana check if you want. I will. Uh, you have Ooh. advantage on those. I should. Oh, cool. From Even the storm room. Storm better. Room. Uh, arcana is. Oh, it's a straight roll, so not that great. 16. 16. <laughs> okay. You try to examine <laughs> those very thin rooms. They're almost hidden but not in the way of like hiding a trap or something they just try to melt inside the like uh, carvings inside the door and you try mm -hmm. to understand where they come from you do notice a few runes of transmutation you're not exactly sure what it does until you see a speck of dust just land on the door and vanishes as it touches the door you get the feeling that those runes are just made to self-clean the doors it's like a variation on prestidigitation, basically. I'm so glad we wasted some spells on those. <laughs> All right. Um, in that case, uh, Jean Luc is going to quickly hop into this room. Okay. So and out of sight. Opening it, you can see a hallway with multiple doors and paintings. Uh, this painting, actually, right in front of where you are, is giving you the ick. It is you. Yeah. Younger oh. and standing tall in front of your mother and father. And there is this, you recognize that the painter was good enough to capture a fraction of the sadness you had in your eyes that day. Just enough for you to notice because you know, but not enough for the lady and the lord to 
care or notice. I was gonna say, I'm pretty sure this was the hallway to my room. Ah, uh, cool. Jean Luc is just gonna stare at that for a little bit of time. All right, Hayden. Um, what about Hayden you? would like to try and just fall, slip in quickly after Jean Luc. Yep, not a problem. Hallway. You do, <coughs> you do <coughs> grab the attention of the guard again. That seems to be getting more and more suspicious of doors mysteriously opening. He gets closer and tries to like close the door good. And you just hear the click of a key inside the hole. That is actually, I will message to Hayden, since we're next to each other and I want to be quiet about it. That is actually a good thing for us. And given that message means I can reply and actually speak without giving us away. Mm -hmm. um, you can. Yep. Where do we go from here? Uh, since I figure we're not going to the study for going this uh, way. Do you, Which one? Because <laughs> Jean Luc obviously knows, but Kyle, who did not build this map, mm -hmm. are either is one of these Jean Luc's room. Uh, Jean Luc's room is actually. Let me tell you that right away. Uh, this one, the one that is here. Cool. Jean Luc's just gonna go in. Okay. Oh, the door opens without a hitch, mm -hmm. and you can see. Your old bedroom with a couple of chairs that you have very fond memories of reading books in front of the light, uh, in front of the fireplace it was it is isolated enough for you to have had some peace and quiet but just a little bit too isolated for you to felt like you were in a house with people you know that you had your Personal bathroom, just the next door, available for you to use at any time, but that also meant that you didn't have to meet a lot of people. But nonetheless, this is your room. Is there something that you remember about that room? Uh, Jean-Luc remembers um, the night before they were banished, uh, getting ready for the party, um, sitting in front of that, in, at their their dressing table, um, spending hours on their face, making sure the look was right, spending time getting into the gown that they wore, and they just kind of step into the room and just kind of stop and look around, almost as if there's this disbelief that they haven't touched it that this room hasn't probably been opened for many years at this point can you give me a history check please probably not but we can certainly try oh okay it's not terrible for jean luc history is also straight yeah another 16. coming inside the room you Im immediately start to reminisce about everything that happened up to that fateful day where you got banished and what strikes you the most about that room is that it has very obviously been left completely untouched. Not a sheet was moved, not a paper was removed. Barely the fire was extinguished, but the room is the way you left it also many years ago. Nobody has stepped foot in that room in years. So you can see, he will quietly say to Hayden behind him. They didn't even want to be seen by the public. And now that I am gone, this room just sits as a reminder of everything they wanted but never got. <laughs> While you're trying to gather yourself a little bit, Indigo. Don't we need to know what Artagan did or <laughs> Ardbeg? What, what did Artagan do? Oh, he is 
basically bouncing around this person to not get touched or seen. <laughs> okay. My okay. kids are in the, oh, oh, oh. like, if there were a tree, it would be like going around the tree, but since he's invisible, he's just kind of going around them. <laughs> Let's, yeah, you know what, let's talk about Artbeck for a sec. Artbeck, you just saw Morwen come in, being announced as Nori. Noreen, sorry. And Noreen. you are currently in the astral plane, right? Ethereal, ethereal plane, yeah. Ethereal plane, okay, yeah. Everything is a little bit muffled around you. You can definitely hear the voices and understand the words, but everything is a little bit muffled. Since you are the closest to Henri, could I get an insight check, please? Absolutely. I'm going to use my Twitch inspiration. Nah, it's better. Uh, 21. 21, okay. The um, instant that Morwen came in, you can see that both Holly and Julia just exchanged a look. And this is this gives you a vibe of like, do you know her? No, I thought she was with you. This kind of thing, you know? Like, very confused about who that person is. But they have this air of chill basically they are powerful and they know it they are in their place they own everything and everyone around so they don't seem too faced about it but nonetheless you can now hear the guard announcing noreen and now he just steps up he's very small an extremely thin sword at his side, ceremonial sword. Crosses his arm and looks at Morwen. Well, welcome to my humble abode. Now, who might you be? I was expecting somebody else. Are we going to me? Yeah, like you are both in the same room, so... Okay. Um, you may call me Noreen, my lord. And uh, Serge was kind enough to offer me his his spot in line. We're having dinner later. It's just going to be kind of of course party. you are. Um, <sighs> Although, if I am not mistaken. My question was not how I might call you. Mm -hmm. My question was, who are you? I am somebody from a family who desires a place in court. And I have come to pave the way as best I can from things that I have acquired in my travels. Juliette takes the takes this uh start to speak <laughs> mm. <laughs> you and may i inquire what throne you aspire to it is not obvious i am here in the presence of of autumnal elegance well, I hope you are aware that this throne is currently taken. Oh, I just want a, a place in court. I have no designs myself on royalty. And what makes you think that you are worthy of such a position? I am very useful in inquiring things. And she's gonna take out the box and show her the bracelet. My, 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 isn't that interesting? 
Honey, my dear, would you mind if I give it a look? You can do whatever you want, my queen. She gets up, her hands never separating from each other. She just keeps a very regal stance and comes uh -huh. a little bit closer to you. Not too close. She remains at a safe-ish distance. But starts to look at the at the item. Um, I did bring a, a guard with me just to protect my interests and I was told that it would, might be possible to have him. He's quite large. Um, oh, yes. Maybe join us in the garden? Well, he can definitely be in the garden looking in. Not a problem. Yes, absolutely. Uh, can you come oh. fetch him, please? Arthur, a guard leads you basically to that door that he opens for that specific occasion. So that you can you can definitely see inside without any issue. Can I look to see if there is a similar uh, barrier on the door? Give me an investigation check. I'm not good at those. 16. 16, okay, yeah. No, there is no such uh, ward here. Although on that note, thank you for reminding me. Uh, Morwen, did you get aid before you arrived? Yes. I think it would have been dispelled. Okay. Just as a note. Okay. So. I'll you just can... take it as damage. So it's... No, because I took my temp. Never mind. <laughs> you can see Juliet's eyes. Beautiful, beautiful emerald eyes. They are very unsettling for you. You just like look at them and for a brief instant you have a flash of Jean-Luc in front of you. But her eyes just flicker purple for a second as you recognize her casting Identify on the mm -hmm. object. That is a fascinating discovery. Did you acquire I heard this? this was, yeah, I heard this was a specialty of yours. You heard well. I am indeed a keen hmm, collector. Uh -huh. Very interesting. Come closer, we need to talk. Come. She I, goes... I will go closer and I will say, this is freely given. Freely given? Now this makes the item even more interesting. Uh, Henri is like... Can it really be considered illegal, considering you have ulterior motives? You did, from your own accord, admit that you want a place in the court. So is that really freely given, or is it just a step in the door for us to do something for you? The, the way into the court is making allies. And this is one way to make allies. <laughs> I don't expect something in return for this item. I just am seeking. Interesting. Don't notice. He kind of gives a look behind his shoulder towards the door. He's like, I can see that you have already made a few alliances of your own. Exactly. A very interesting companionship. Uh -huh. What? What other kind of allies do you have? I hope you do not mind the questions. We need to be careful and thorough. I have very strong allies that um, will help me when I get to the place that I desire. Wonderful. Powerful, you say? He huh? just... Taps his chin a little bit, plays with his goatee, and he's like, hmm. It is a good time right now to have friends. We cannot have enough friends. We can mm -hmm. have, however, the wrong friends. I just want to make sure that you are not allying yourself with 
people of lesser qualities. Mm -hmm. I hope well, you I catch my meaning. Well, I'm so um, I would think you would see the quality that I seek. That is very interesting of you. It does and to, those, it does to those Juliette. And other, you can, yeah? Those have other qualities, and she'll look at Artur, mm. have their uses. Yes. I can agree to that. Albeit a little bit limited at times, but, you know, a tool is a tool. Exactly. Now... And he just sits on the throne and gives a side look to Juliette. Give me an insight check on this one. Jesus. How much was that? Natural one. Natural one. Okay. Do you have Twitch inspiration? Twi 25 for Art Big. 25 for Art Big. Okay. Uh, yeah, wait, wait, wait. I have energy inspiration on this one. Okay. Oh, wow, that's a whopping five. Let me see what I add to it. Insight? Insight. Uh, 12. A whopping 12, okay. Uh, mm -hmm. You don't really get what that was, but Artbeg, yeah. what you can definitely see from that glance is he looked at her expecting an answer and you could definitely see Juliette just give a very small, almost imperceptible nod, as in... Yeah, continue. I would like to see where that leads. You get the feeling that Morwen has captured his interest for the time being. Meanwhile, Indigo. Indigo. Let's deal with you. Indigo, oh no. Indigo, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> so, Indigo, you are now in the study trying mm -hmm. to keep as exceedingly quiet as you can yep what do you do i am very quiet and in the corner okay at the moment there is no movement the lady continues to read a book mm -hmm. you can hear the faintest clink of a spoon inside a teacup, mm -hmm. followed by very sparse sips. Even the sips sound <laughs> elegant, if it makes mm -hmm. sense. You can almost hear the like pinky up while she drinks. What was it she said when I entered the room? Um, have you spent enough time uh, trying to understand Jean-Luc's language? I spend a lot of time with Jean-Luc, um, and I have the ability to mimic people very well, so even if I don't fully understand the mm -hmm. meaning of the words, I would have at least caught it, probably. Yeah. She said, mais qu'est-ce qui se passe? Which is okay. basic enough for you to have understood, but what is happening? Hmm. So, I am going to... if. You know the thing where two predators are sitting in the same space and they're yeah. waiting for the other one to make a move first? Yeah. I think that might be the situation that's happening right now, where we are both in opposite corners, both sitting in chairs, and just waiting. Waiting? Okay. Fair enough. Iron will, baby. <laughs> Iron like, will. Just for, shits, I... just for shits and giggles, could you give yeah. me a wisdom save, please? A wisdom save? I can try. This is not a spell or anything. Calm down. It's just because I want to see how iron your will is. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, that oh. is a 16, which for me is very good. Okay. <laughs> you remain in your chair, comfortable-ish. Yeah. And... Yeah. With nearly a sound, nearly a move. Can I get a general vibe check on the room? My passive <laughs> insight is 27, so I feel like I'd probably get a pretty good mm -hmm. uh, general idea. 
What kind of vibe are you looking for exactly? Um, <laughs> antagonistic <laughs> anger, any kind of like negative juju in the in the air. Hmm. As a matter of fact, it feels way more relaxed than what okay. you were hoping for, kind of. Oh, like not like that you were expecting. Yeah. Uh, the only thing very unrelaxed here is you at this point. Yeah. But the room itself seems to be a very chill zone, and gives you a vibe of um, do not do not disturb. Yeah. Kind of thing. And the voice that I heard mm -hmm. is definitely the Juliet voice that Jean Luc taught me, right? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, so if she doesn't make a move, Indigo doesn't make a move. She does Which, move I'm from sorry. time. She does move from time <laughs> to time, but mostly to just pick up another book or catch a quill and parchment and start to scribble something. Yep. But except from that, she's remaining there, reading. Yeah, I, I apologize for anybody who is hoping for more action in this room, but there is going to be none. There's none. <laughs> not a problem. Absolutely. Indigo is not stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Now, meanwhile, you guys, let's have a look at Jean-Luc and Hayden for a second. Jean-Luc, you kind of like gathered yourself a little bit, but you are currently in your bedroom. We, right, we, um, I suppose that it's enough, uh, reminiscing for now, we should Find a way to get to Indigo. Yes, is there another way in, perhaps with a door not right next to the study? A uh, door into a stairway, a door into a hallway that leads into it? What you would it's remember uh, from the basic layout is that down here was your private bathroom. Mm -hmm. Here was another door, uh, like another room. Mm -hmm. which was mostly guest room, as was this door. Both of them had a little window leading to an outside uh, small um, balcony of sorts, just overlooking the whole uh, estate. <laughs> but except from that, this is kind of the only way in and out. You do know that like the, the bedroom that is, yeah, no, that's the, like the only way out of this segment is basically the double doors that just got locked. Not door wise, but I can uh, magically get us in there. Well, I can. If it would save you resources, I can also get in myself. I can do what Ardbeg did. Uh, step into the ethereal plane. Uh, the only reason I didn't do it before is I <laughs> didn't want to leave you without my pass without trace. You are a good person, Aiden. I am very, very glad to have you here with us. I think at this point, where everyone is, I think we are good without the trace. So we may, you can probably drop that for now, and I will find a less expensive way in there. And I will, well, not see you, technically, mm -hmm. but Oh, scene. at this point, you will. Greater invisibility is a short spell, mm. which is why I'm like, get in the room, get in the room, get in the room! <laughs> ah. <clears throat> well, so what, I will so, so what is the plan? see you. See you there. Uh, and I will uh, use my... Use... Uh, I forget the name of the boon, but it lets me cast Etherealness. Okay. Uh, nice. Step into the Ethereal Plane. And okay, and where are you walking about? Uh, passing through this room in case there's anything interesting in there, uh, okay. and then into the study if there's not. Let me reveal what is in the room. So this is a room. There is no door leading inside uh, directly the, um, the the study, but since you are ethereal, you could definitely go through if you want. Yeah, I'm just going to ethereal plane weirdness into this room okay and hope that juliet doesn't have non-magical true sight 
You get inside. Can I still get a stealth? No. No, you're a ghost. Fuck that. You're in. <laughs> you are inside the study right now. Surrounded by books. More books than you could ever imagine. Floor to ceiling. And in the corner you can now see the shape of Juliette Toussaint reading. At the moment this is all you see. Although with your mundane blind sight, you would see the unmoving oh no, yeah, you could see the unmoving shape of Indigo in the corner, just trying its best to go like melt into the background, no? I don't know if you would because you're not on the same plane as me. That is fair. And also my blind sight isn't very far, it's only ten feet. Okay, yeah, so no, yeah. you have no idea that Indigo is here. What you, Things are chill. What what you do notice, <laughs> and that I would also have mentioned that uh, for uh, Indigo, is that here and there are stairways leading downstairs. Mm. Just so you know. Actually, going to reveal them is going to be easier to like picture, but yeah, stairways going up. Once Hayden is gone. <laughs> yeah. Jean-Luc is going to come back to the painting. Mm -hmm. um, he's going to look, they're going to look at it and say, I failed you so many years ago. I will not let that happen today. The friends have helped fix what they did to you. We're going to make it better. And they will take the mace of snacking mm -hmm. and gently puncture it and just tear the shit out of the painting. That's beautiful. And as you just tear that painting, you know that the rip is very irregular, but for some reason, it almost matches the shape and separates your shape to the one of Henri and Juliette. But the painting is shredded and you are currently alone in this hallway with a guard next to the door. Yeah. <laughs> What do you do? Uh, uh, let's see. Let me check footage. Yeah. I think. If, correct me if I'm wrong. Face step can go through walls as well, right? I'm sorry. What? Face step is like misty step. Oh, uh, yeah. I would say so. I don't think you have to see the the, the your destination, right? I uh, do. You do, with do misty need to step. see for misty step. You yes. can do it like through glass and such. You just need to see it. You don't need to have a clear path to it, but you do need to see it. Yeah. Okay. I'm combining two different spells in my head. Cool. Yeah. New solution. Dimension door. <laughs> oh yeah, that dimension door would be different. Cool. So that's the opportunity. That's the option I have. Um, okay. In that case, knowing where I am and knowing my home and knowing where the guards are, mm -hmm. I would dimension door myself. Where? To the balcony. Crouched down to avoid detection. Okay. Uh, could I get a stealth check, please? Mm-hmm. Natural 20. For Natural 21. 20. Damn. Okay. You arrive without any issue on that balcony, and none is the wiser. Cool, 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 cool. The weather is comfortable. Our tank is <laughs> just hanging out outside the door, listening for shit to go down, like kind of keeping an eye in both places. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now, Moen. Uh huh. Noreen. <laughs> How. Right now, they are letting you approach, basically. Mm -hmm. Not to a point where you're like, you know, the closest, but yeah, enough, for you to have, her... yeah, enough for you Different. to have a casual conversation. Mm -hmm. What do you say? Um, she's going to take out the journal and show it to Henri and say, I have a gift for you. As well, my lord, to show that is unusual. My if you must know, I am not 
that much of a reader when it doesn't come to martial strategy, but um, what, what is that? It's something I procured in my travels that I think you would be interested in reading as giving advantage to our cause. That is interesting. On mm -hmm. paper, maybe it would be mm -hmm. a little less enigmatic. Come on. And I will just give it to you. He looks at Juliette. Is the book magical? No. Magical, nope, cursed, mundane. anything? It is a mundane journal that I rolled very well uh, to create. I got... Uh, Let's see, where are my numbers here? So I got a 34 sleight of hand mm -hmm. and a performance was a 30 <laughs> to create uh, this journal that was giving documentation of every mission we knew we were seen on. Mm -hmm. It's following Summer's uh, scouts and it's detailing where we had been seen, who was on that mission. Mm -hmm. Um, it's also detailing things like um, Summer's failure at the Zocos mission of mm -hmm. not being able to slay the Red Dragon and how the Salamanders were there, the Druids were there. So it's like detailed out about it. And it also uh, talks about specific families and who should be trusted. And it's all written in a cipher that Autumn uses. First of all, I can't wait I cannot wait for your second character so you can start rolling like a normal person again. <laughs> second of all, that's amazing. Broken as shit. Uh, he just <laughs> looks at Juliet for a second. She looks at the book, nods, and you see her cast Mage Hand to pick up the book. And yeah. drop it in Henri's hands. I'm very invested in the outcome of the current situation. Hmm. That is. Hmm. He starts to browse a few pages here and there. Yeah. Do you know of the content? I am aware of the content. Interesting. I am surprised you managed to read this. This is, let's say, an exclusive way of writing. Very I interesting. Have allies, I told you, that are very, very talented. I bring oh. much to the cause. <laughs> that is. Ah. Well, from the look of it, it seems we have somewhat similar allies on some of the aspects of your journey. Uh -huh. Maybe I should ask them if they can vouch for you. Munker, okay. would you mind? Not in the slightest, my love. Uh, you can see her start to cast sending okay mm, hold on i have to count 25 words in my head <laughs> this, is, this is not as easy as it looks mm. my lord a potential ally appeared today seems to know a lot about you do you know of a Noreen? How should we proceed? She waits for a second. Does she? Is that spoken out loud? Yes. Uh, sending, okay. I think he's spoken out loud now. I don't think sending's spoken out loud. It doesn't have to be. Oh. I can't. I know. I, I know message can be whispered, but I'm not familiar with sending. Uh, let me just. Quickly check that because the wording could be interesting. Uh, da, 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 da. <laughs> <Eat the> <coughs> uh, 
he does the not say. He, that. he actually it's does not say. So. I would say because it's it, silent. It does require verbal component. Yeah, but it doesn't say that it needs yeah. to be verbalized. I'm gonna, I'm but gonna, it, I'm gonna rule it uh, as in you speak the words out loud. Okay. Because today I am God. I can do what the fuck the fuck I want. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, Marla's sure. just going to smile and say, oh, I don't think he's aware of my existence, but wouldn't it be she, wonderful She just holds won? her finger up, interrupting you mid-sentence. Just one oh. second. Mm-hmm. Very well. Carry on. What were you saying? I, I don't believe he's aware of my existence, but wouldn't it be wonderful if he was? Wouldn't it be indeed? However, knowing of this way of writing will uh -huh. require you to be at least known by him. This is not easily accessible to just a common person, is it? It's... At that, Artur is going <clears> to... <throat> uh -huh. if, if I may... Forgive the interruption. We are playing a game right now where we are identifying just how powerful she is and how powerful her connections are and how strong and good, rather how good she is at identifying useful tools and allies. Let me ask you a question, if I may. This guard of yours next to me, how valuable is he to you? Henri looks at him. Morwen grins. Mm. That's Eric. Good job. He is what adequate. He has Artur value will... as long as he serves me. Artur will kind of rifle through his stuff and set down gently on the ground. Payment. 3,000 gold for him. To purchase him? No. To provide for you the loss that you are going to experience if you accept that payment. He looks at you and smiles. Eric, could you come a little closer, please? He <laughs> Yes, sir. Please stay here for a second. I accept your payment. Is he still standing next to him? Yeah, Morwen's going to give Arthur some space to do his thing. <laughs> he, right now, Henri's standing here looking at the mm -hmm. scene. So... Artur will look down at... Eric was his name? Eric, mm -hmm. yes. Hi, Eric. You are only as powerful as the tools you employ. Can any of your tools do this? And Artur will open his hand that has a wonderful little tattoo that goes down his palm and all the way up and just lower his hand down onto Eric's shoulders and engulf his head. Now, for Leono, that mm -hmm. is a tattoo of devouring. It's a oh. bag of devouring on Artor's hand that functions <laughs> like a bag of devouring. I did some math. The average palm size is 3.3 .3 inches. The average man is 5.9 feet tall. Artor is 21 feet tall, so do a little bit of math, multiply it approximately by three, you're at 21, 21 feet. Hand size is nine inches wide. At the palm, the average head size is six to seven inches. So in theory, the head will fit inside the palm. Artur will keep his hand there, open, just open, showing that his hand is open for six seconds. And the Bag of Devouring, it specifically says if a creature starts their turn there, uh, they are destroyed. Their body is obliterated. After 12 seconds, Artur will lift his hand and DM allowing, the head will be destroyed and the guard dead. The DM definitely allows this. This is awesome. This is no. gnarly and awesome. Are we questions? 
She mm. has managed yes. to employ me for some time and call me among her closest allies. Can any of your tools do that? Definitely not some of the guards, that is for sure. That is... <laughs> that is amazing. You found yourself quite an interesting ally. Mm -hmm. Although, if I may ask, is that hand of yours able to dispose of the rest as well? Because, to be frank, it is quite disgusting. Well, if you'd like me to, I can absolutely make the hair, make it fit. You can definitely see in the corner the um, the other guard that was uh, just around there around the corner <laughs> throws up everything that he had. <laughs> Artur takes the time and makes it fit. You hear the crunches of bones trying to fit into that small orifice. But nothing is remaining of Eric after a little bit. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's just looking at Juliet, who just tried to avoid her gaze. Hmm. This, this is a very strong demonstration. I appreciate it. Very much so. And he turns to Morwen. Should we, you know, support you? Would you be able to provide more allies in the kind? Oh, I have many, many friends with many, many talents. I think you would be impressed. I already am. Well... I think that warrants for a longer discussion. Absolutely. Uh -huh. If you would be so kind, uh, Francois is going to lead you to the lounge area, if that is okay uh -huh. with you. And I will just quickly get rid of Serge and come back to you. Would that I, be okay? I would like to stay within... Uh, distance of my favorite giant. You understand. Oh, well, in that case, be my guest and enjoy the garden. Mm -hmm. It is, as you can see, very neatly trimmed. We are quite proud of it. <clears throat> so he invites you to go outside the door that still has a puddle of blood on the ground. Yeah, I'll just Tiny... skip over the, the puddle. Yeah, uh, and invites you to be in the garden with your favorite giant. Artbeg? Well, this is going. Artbeg's just watching this from the ethereal plan the whole goddamn time. Yep. <laughs> Artbeg, Artbeg is very amused. Okay. <laughs> Do you stay in the in the room while he dispatches off the last visitors? That's yes. Coming. Okay. You you do see the the man that was hitting on Morwen just come here, make his case, and you can just hear him as yeah. when he finishes and he goes uh, goes to go out. <laughs> he just mumbles. Well, I'll be damned. She did make them happy, and he goes out. Do you remain in the throne room at the moment? Yes. Okay. I'm I'm sticking to Henri like white on rice. Okay. <laughs> well, I think that this is a good moment to have a pause for the next Ooh. leg of that uh, conversation. We're going to stop the, give the giveaway and pick up a great winner. This is going to be Garen the Blessed. Ooh. Perfect. Garen the Blessed winning a maze of healing. I could not have like done that. Oh, sorry, that was a wrong button. My apologies. Uh, no, I was second. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> okay. 
Now, uh, during the break, there will not be a marble race uh, because of reasons, but there will uh, be another yeah. giveaway. This one is going to be for a set of earrings by the one and only Fallon Paladin, aka Adam. You can uh, oh, wow. get, in, get in touch with him for the colors and everything. But yeah, we're going to start the giveaway right now. Same dealio, exclamation point shiny thing. <coughs> Do your thing. <coughs> and we see each other in just a few minutes. Bye bye. Hello again, humans of the internet. We are back and we are going to pick a winner for the beautiful earrings. The winner is going to be. Possum cats. There you go. Well, uh, we'll let you get in touch with Adam. He will uh, make sure to uh, you give the color the decision the address. You know what to do. Get in touch with him. Okay. So, with that out of the way, let's go back to the castle. More specifically, on the balcony of the castle. Jean Luc, what are you doing out there? If I may ask. <laughs> Um, Jean-Luc, from this vantage point, is this a door or a windowed door? So, uh, it's uh, double doors. Where you are right here, it's just a, a set of uh, wooden double doors. Oh, so I can't see? You cannot see through. No. Cool. You do have a set of uh, windows right there. If you want to kind of lean into it or try to, like, spider climb on the side, you can definitely try that. Um... Jean-Luc is instead going to message Indigo. Okay. Because he generally knows the direction. Um, mm -hmm. And to say, um, is everything all right? Do you need assistance? What do you see? You can reply to this message. Uh... Do I have to reply verbally? Mm. Message, I think, is very quiet. Uh, message is like a whisper, but it's... Can reply in a whisper that only you can hear, so... Okay. So, um... You'll get the familiar... Mm, from Indigo. <laughs> <laughs> and then... Uh... uh Juliet. No violence. Quiet. Okay for now. <laughs> to him, to themselves, they're like, Juliet, Juliet, oh. Fuck, 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 fuck. Merd. That's what I love. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, Jean-Luc is going to... <laughs> Regret some decisions right at this moment. Um, As you should. <laughs> he was told that it's quiet and not violent. Like, we're good right now, so. I feel like if this were a TV oh, show, so... TV show, it would zoom in my zoom in on John Luke's face like, Oui, that's me. On the balcony. <laughs> You're probably wondering how I got here right now. <laughs> But although if, we, if it would be a better, although right? if it would be a better TV show like a telenovela, the, ah. the the camera would zoom in on the door opening and a gasp in Spanish would happen. Gasp in French this time. <laughs> oh my god, that's so good. Yeah, no, Jean Luc is not seen inside. Uh, that is a wooden door, so they cannot see into the room. No, but in the throne room. Oh, you right. saw they, the, they saw you her. Know, Right. I know there's two Juliets now. Right, Which that's what the point was. It's very yeah. bad. Yep. Cool. So do you just <clears throat> chill on the balcony? Um. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm waiting for the plan to go off because I am now okay. outside. No problem. Hayden. Yeah, Hayden will. Hayden, sorry. Um, I, th I think he's also just going to wait for go time. All right. So is Indigo? 
Yeah, we're just waiting for perhaps Henri to show up and uh, we'll take it from there, you know? Tabernak, uh, shit. Okay. Fuck. <laughs> I only know French Canadian, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's okay, that's okay. It's the funniest one to know. Uh, and a quick, quick question. Uh, what does Artagan do? Mm. Um, he is in his invisible form, just kind of quietly traipsing along. Mm -hmm. To look down below to watch the scene. <laughs> if he could have invisible pop, invisible popcorn, he'd have been watching that and like would have held up like a nine point eight card for our tour. Okay, not a problem. Oh, actually, <laughs> yes. Peyton has something that he'd do now that I now that I am reminded that Articon exists. Uh, he's going to float ethereally out here and try and get Artagon's attention. Because mm -hmm. you can't see it, but they're just looking at you like, he's just looking at you like, what the fuck is this? I think uh, I should actually get you to like roll for Artagon to see if he gives a shit. Well, plus how is Hayden finding him? Yeah. Guessing. <laughs> Guessing yep. that he's about where he was before if he didn't follow us. Yeah, so, he didn't, so he's not right there. And and, and would he give I'm a shit? Then? Right there, just flailing wildly in the ethereal plane, hoping that Artagon sees and gives some kind of sign. Ooh. Ooh. That's a, what kind of role do you want? I'm gonna make it like a just a wisdom check. Generic wisdom. Eleven. Okay. <laughs> I would say moderate fucks were giving. <laughs> the the table will look over like that's that is new, alright, fine. But fine. Anyway, back to more interesting things. <laughs> so Hayden. It doesn't it seem like you grasp anyone's attention. Well, I also can't see Artagon, so I'm just going to hope that he's paying attention, whether he is or not, is immaterial to what I am doing. Uh, just try and communicate through hand gestures that there is two Juliets. Oh, I would like you to make a performance check to try to mime two Juliets, please. Yes. <laughs> How hard can it be? Point at Juliet and then hold up two. Still performance check. That's a check. seven. How much is that? Seven. Seven. That's how hard it is. Yeah, yeah. Hayden's one charisma skill. He can do anything in his persuasion. Uh, Artagan, you get the feeling that he tells you that, like, Juliet has an amazing pair. <laughs> I mean, that's true or not. That's neither here nor there. I mean, sure, they're lovely. Especially when you're, what, 400, 500 years old? How old are they at this point? Who even knows? By the way, let's let's have the camera go downstairs for a sec. They have um, like gotten rid of the rest of the audience. Uh, <laughs> he sat back on his throne of sorts and has had a chair brought up for you, Noreen. Okay. The door was also opened wide uh, as to allow right. Otto to just squeeze in. Okay. Nice. It's tight, so it's but you can be inside now. You can, tr I, I mean, you can squeeze inside. It's not going to be comfortable going through, but once you are inside, you have enough like size under the ceiling to like stand up straight yeah, if you want to. He'll come in and try to be try to be gentle, not damage anything. Okay. The the columns that are everywhere around that room seem to be extremely solid and very well kept, so nothing seems to be broken in the process. You are inside the throne room. The oh by the way, I will remove Eric. Eric is not there anymore. There we go. <laughs> Eric's been numb. Uh Morwin's gonna message Artur. Um doesn't look like he's going to the study. Should we uh, engage? 
the take on Ri. I can. Yeah, you do see though that he's holding the book and trying to read, uh -huh. at least skimming through the pages. Right. We expected One. him to take it to a study, which he's not. And I think if we start a ruckus, it will alert our team that we're going for it. Juliet is like. May I ask, though, you have found quite a lot of allies and informations and many objects and interesting people. That is wonderful. But mm -hmm. such a collection usually does not go unnoticed. The fact that we do not know about you, even though you know so much, is a tad worrisome. I'm just that good. Or you're just that dangerous. That as well. Dangerous is not a bad thing to be in these times. Indeed, as long as you are on the right side of the danger. Oh, I am. So, I think it all comes to one simple question, my dear. Mm -hmm. What? What would make us trust you? You gave wonderful gifts, you gave wonderful information. You mm -hmm. proved that you are extremely valuable and well surrounded. But none of this speaks of trust at the moment. Do you have gonna look at information that could prove that you are our allies? Mm -hmm. If so, you can safely say it in front of my husband and I, and we would be glad to proceed with more discussions about your future, but as you can understand, one of the reasons we have been in power and alive so, for so long is that we are cautious. Mm -hmm. So, re I reiterate, why should we trust you, Noreen? I'm going to look at Artor. If you may allow me to speak some more, there are some responses I would have to the idea of trust. Trust is earned, not given. And well, if we freely throw around the idea of trust, if I were to walk in here and say, Lord and Lady Toussaint, I trust you. You don't know me. Why would you care that I trust you? You really shouldn't, especially ones that have been as cautious and in power as long as you have. In fact, you should be more concerned about the random person that would show up and openly say, I trust you. You should instead go through a time of vetting and trialing, if you will, to learn the people that you bring. So, my honest opinion, if it matters, is we can't answer that question whether you can trust us or whether we can trust you right now. Because we don't know. The game of politics requires nuance and thought. If we were to go around and saying, I trust, I trust, I trust, they would stab us in the back rather quickly. Because we're throwing around trust willy-nilly. You He's are... Uh, <laughs> he would look to Juliet. You are a... Renowned collector, and your knowledge of the arcane, at least the arcane items from what I know, is vast and expanse. You would then look at Henry, and you, sir, are a man of military knowledge, militaristic knowledge. You would, you know how to navigate on a battlefield. Put them together, it's a great combination. However, 
if you will excuse the rudeness of the term, I would not trust Noreen to lead a contingent of martial soldiers any sooner than I would trust Eric to pop back out of my hand. We oh. need time with each other. Henri is just so not... nodding at everything you say for now. Why not sit down and visit? Let the martial types share their knowledge and let the arcane types share theirs and get to know each other. Free of each other's influence because what I would say around Noreen and your lady Toussaint uh, would be politely censored so as to not offend the non martial types. However, Lord Toussaint, if you and I were to sit down over a drink and discuss militaristic matters, I would have no qualms being as graphic as necessary, because I would not worry that I would offend you, because you understand as a militaristic leader. And that is not to say anything of the sort towards Lady Toussaint. Lady Toussaint, if you were to speak to me of anything magical, I would be confused and you would be wasting your time. And your time is valuable. So split the time and learn to trust us. And we will learn to trust you. Henri turns to Juliette. Should I take this one? She nods. My dear giant, allow me to paint you a better picture of who my wife is. You can see grace and elegance. You can see beauty and you can obviously see um, power. She has a nice pair. <laughs> Do you say that out loud? <laughs> That's what I thought. <laughs> Even with no eyes, I could see that, yes. <laughs> what you do not see at first glance, though, is that she has seen more blood and guts and gore in her youth than you have seen in your life. She is as solid as I am, if not more. She is the best of us all in this room. So allow me to tell you that graphicness is not going to be a problem for her. That you can be assured. Now, to be completely frank with you, I despise some of your turn of phrases. You should do this. We should do that. I know what I should do. And I do not believe that you, as powerful as you are, get to dictate what I, Henri Toussaint, should do. But I am of good nature and I did not like Eric anyway. So I would be open to a drink, even though I am not sure that I possess a tankard of your magnitude. So Tomorrow won't be doing nothing while that conversation is happening. She could be. <laughs> uh, she's going to pretend to be looking around at, at the uh, art and just kind of facing every direction. Jean-Luc, your parents are in the throne room. Jean-Luc, your parents are in the throne room. Just kind of like <laughs> messaging in every direction as she's like, ooh, that's beautiful. That's Jean-Luc. And um, <laughs> trying to get a message to him. Okay. And your parents are in the throne room, and I think we need to go. Jean-Luc? Yeah, yes, I'll be Um. While this is happening, uh, Beck's going to drink his potion of resistance just in preparation. All right. That was radiant damage, right? That was radiant, yes. 
Yeah, and I, that, I'd like that to... Is all. Go ahead. <laughs> that is all? Okay. Knowing as there is another Juliet now, um, <laughs> I will respond. There is a second Juliet in the study. Ah, uh, Merk. <laughs> Um, all right. Uh, you will say, they respond. Of uh, your word, has is Henri leaving the throne room? Then he leaves okay. the throne room. Do I get the feeling he's gonna go somewhere with Artur and have a drink? He seems to be on his way to try to go somewhere in the garden. Uh huh. Okay. Add it to the garden. As he goes I out, will... he, he goes to Arthur. Mind your head, though. This costs a lot. Of course, I would hate to damage something so gorgeous. As for the tanker, don't worry, I always carry my own. I also have my own drink because I've been known to drink places dry, and that's rather rude. Worst case scenario, we have a magnificent fountain that you can probably use as a sea pickup. <laughs> Follow Jean -Luc me. Jean-Luc will reach out to Ardbeg. Send a message to Ardbeg. Mm -hmm. Saying, um, I am aware of the situation. I trust your judgment. If we need to go, make the call. Just as a note, as uh, Henri gets out, uh, two of the guards will locate around the uh, fountain. Almost immediately. Ad Big will respond to the message. Roger that, pal. I, can he message him? Sorry, not to be a butt, but... Oh shit, I'm far. I'm not, you're not on the same plane, I think. Oh, uh, balls. Send, you could do sending. I didn't bring sending. Sending you can do, yeah. Okay. I didn't bring well, sending. <laughs> sending doesn't <laughs> heal people. Well, Morwen did ask you, are we going on your word? Cool. 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 She's happy to kick it I off, mean, but I'm sure Arden will get the hint. I mean, Ardbeg knows that once Henri is alone yeah that's yeah, the that's, that's the yeah. time to go so he right. would probably make that judgment himself yeah cool 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 i'm not stressed i'm fine this is fine it's fine I'm does fine. that mean ardbeg's following artur and Henri out to the 100 percent white on right yes. yep yep all right so i will let you position yourself Alright, Hayden and Artigan can see more went right? Yeah. Not that she knows that. <laughs> Juliet is just looking very attentively at you, uh, Morwen, mm -hmm. and invites you to just uh, put the box on the floor that somebody will take care of this. She puts it down. Okay. So who is going to do what, you guys? <sighs> Trusting and hoping that Indigo and Jean-Luc can handle whatever goes down in the study. If anything goes down in the study, Hayden will stay in the ethereal plane until something starts happening uh, from the ethereal plane, stick by Morwen. Indigo? Does, does Jean-Luc tell Indigo to kick shit off? That's the question. Jean because until then, Indigo's sitting. That's right. Um, they would, because they, they know shit's going to go down elsewhere. Okay. So give word to Indigo. Indigo instantly mm -hmm. turns into Jean-Luc. <gasps> ah, interesting. Jean-Luc will be dressed in the perfect autumnal Aladrin princely gear. Mm-hmm. 
He will have his red hair tied behind him. Mm -hmm. And you know, you know, in films when somebody has been in a fight and they're damaged, but they're so beautiful that like, Mm -hmm. it hardly looks like they've been touched at all. Okay. Indigo is going to come out, look at the Juliet that's in this room Mm -hmm. and go, Mamer, Mamer, I'm, I'm home. And his, his voice will shake. Oh and he'll goodness. begin to cry for his mother. Give me a performance check oh. with advantage. Jeez. <laughs> okay. I'm shaking. <laughs> okay. Okay. That is a 29. 29. She gets up in a rush and just drops her book at her feet. She looks at you and just takes a step towards you. Her mouth a little ajar. She takes a few more steps. What do you do? Mama, it's just me yesterday. It's just you today. And I'll keep apologizing. She just gets closer. It's like Jean-Luc. And Jean-Luc outside can probably hear his own voice apologizing sure profusely can. to his own mother. I hate it. So much today. She comes to you. Jean-Luc, are, are, you, are you really here? Is that really Mama, you? I am so sorry. Shh, 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 shh. It's, it's okay. It's okay, come. Just... What happened to you? Just... Samuel... Samuel keeps trying to sway me to their side and I've seen the horrors of the sun and I... I know that I have to come back because... you were right the whole time. Healing does nothing. I should have been practicing the arcane. She goes to hold your hand if you let her. Uh-huh. She grabs your hand and just her eyes are just watering up. You can see her lips is are quivering. She's Jean-Luc Enfant. Just say no more. You are safe. You are with you are with yours now. I'm you going do not to have frant- to worry. I'm frantically going to hug her and then stab her in the back. Fuck yeah, bitch! Okay. Um, I'm going to need you first. Yeah. To give me a charisma check. Yep. Just straight charisma. Uh, charisma save. Sorry. Okay. I'm going to be using my Twitch inspiration. Okay. Yep. Okay. Uh, that's a 22. 22. Okay. As you prepare yourself to strike, for a second you feel yourself a little shimmer. But you shrug it off. And you're good. Roll me an attack, please. Okay. Oh my god. That's a natural one. Natural one. Interesting. No. As you go as you go to you stab her. Back. Oh, I lied. I have Twitch inspiration. Can I use it? <laughs> I'm gonna say yes. Okay. I don't know how I can roll so many ones in a row. Um, but oh no, that's you... twenty one to hit. When you want to hit, okay. That hits. Roll for damage. Okay, that is uh, nine points piercing, Mm -hmm. as well as three points cold damage. Mm -hmm. And if you allow sneak attack? 
the thing is, she was not surprised. Yeah. As she has the alert feet. So okay. that would not have gotten the the sneak attack. I'm sorry. That's fine. She's still got my dagger in her back, and I'm holding her in an embrace. Okay. Looking like Jean-Luc with red hair. <laughs> We're definitely going to need some initiative on this one, you guys. Yep. Shit is kicking, uh, kicking off. Son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Rocking that cleric initiative. Rocking that cleric initiative, kids. Mm. Interesting. Okay, so you guys over twenty. Oh. Oh. I forgot I had to roll initiative. Uh, Arbeck. You want? Oh, hold on, I'm just doing math with ah. um. Okay, so it's 25. 25, all right. Somebody else uh, over 20? 20 on the dot. 20 on the dot, okay. Uh, <laughs> over 15. Indigo. 18. Okay. Over 15 on the dot. 15 on the dot. Aiden. Uh, over 10. Oh, you make you guys make me sad. Arto, how many did you get? I got twenty on the die. Oh yeah, sorry, my bad. Moen. Seven. Seven. Interesting. Good. Uh huh. Do I have everyone? That would be a everyone. natural one for two. Natural one. That's that's who I was missing. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, did you roll for our tagging? Oh, sure didn't. Oh shit! Uh, cool, cool, cool. Uh, <laughs> I am not panicking. This is fine. Uh, uh, twenty-four for our tagging. Twenty-four. Okay. Interesting. Uh, can you give me his dexterity uh, score, please? Six. Six. Okay. Interesting. Uh... <laughs> Perfect. Top of the round. Artbeg, some shit is happening. What do you do? <laughs> um, oh, I'm going to have to handle two fucking maps. Yay. <laughs> I am happy about that. I mean, the rooms that we're fighting in are visible on both floors. You could move us all to I the could. second floor. And yeah, I could. I could. But we pretend. But I have reasons. Artbeg, what do you do? Oh, fuck. Um, action. Ardbeg's going to drop out of the ethereal plane. Free action. Surprise, cockface. <laughs> uh, and then action surge. Um, he is going to attack three times. Okay. Uh, I assume I'm flanking with my good frost giant friend. You assume well. All right. So let me just roll some shit. <laughs> awesome. Um, so that's a 38 crit on the first hit. Uh, it does hit, but that's not a crit. Oh, interesting. Um, and then it is a, um, a lot. Hold on. I can't do that math with COVID brain. 27 to hit. 27 hits. And then a... 37 not crit. Yep. But Hit. technically a crit. So yes. no crit damage. Yeah, no crit damage on this one. Alright. Um, please hold. Oh, that's 24 slashing on the first hit. Okay. And 2 radiant. 2 radiant, alright. Second hit is a. Another 24 slashing. Okay. And three radiant. Okay. And the third <laughs> is 14 slashing. 14 slashing, and, okay. And four radiant. Four radiant, okay, dear lord. Uh, 
Have I, have I used a bonus action? No, I have not. Uh, bonus action, word of radiance. I mm -hmm. need a con save, please. Con save, all right. That's going to be... Uh, uh, 26. Yeah, that saves. Okay. Is that your turn? That is my turn, yep. Okay. It is now one of the Juliet's turn. Which one? The one in front of Morwen. Hearing the the stuff outside, she's going to be a little bit angry. And she is going to... Just give me one second. Yeah. Uh, she's going to turn to you, uh, Morwen. I would like you to make a constitution save please oh no hold on never mind that's not what i wanted my apologies she's going to cast time stop and earn herself da -da 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 -da, d4 please great three turns in which she can do what she wants and you don't know uh, so, what she's going to do for her first turn, she's going to move somewhere else, preferably here. Ah, uh, hi, sorry, I was on mute. Um, counter spell, fifth level. Unfortunately, you do not see her cast a spell, as she used she some does. sorcery points to do some subtle okay. casting. Damn it. So first turn, movement, and she is going... <coughs> mm. Yeah. She's going to uh, cast Mage Armor. Then she's going to... Yeah. She's going to cast uh, Armor of Agathis on herself. And then for uh -huh. first turn and last uh, action. Ah. Yeah. She's going to <coughs> cast Greater Invisibility. At the moment, uh, you do not really know where she is. Uh, that is her turn. Now the second Juliette. Because when you're alert, your initiative is off the charts. Indigo, I would like you to die, please. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, now that's going to be... I, I need a wisdom save, please, from you. Okay. Not great. That's uh, a 12. 12. Uh, you are charmed at the moment. Uh, you are under her control. She is going to just give you the order. Attack your friends. Okay. Now, uh, Artagan. So, fun fact, he's got true sight. Yep. So, you can see Juliet. You can. And he can see her. Let me show you where. Uh, if I could actually get her myself. There you go. Uh, she is currently... Here. Um, cool. All right. He is going to. Uh, uh, reveal himself. Interesting. 
and point right at her and mm-hmm. go, hmm, no, I don't think we will today. And he will cast Feeble Mind. Hmm, interesting. She's going to counter spell that. It's 8th level. <laughs> Shit. 8th level? Uh, you are muted. Get. Counter spell. Counter spell, okay. I'm- Feedback, so I'm trying to mute myself. Okay, so that's going to be a roll. Uh, remind me how it goes with counter spell, uh, with like a uh, counter spell, like higher levels. It's like Ten plus the level of the spell. Okay. That I have to roll, I think. Yeah. Um. Do tell. So I was gonna do um, a fifth level. Mm-hmm. Is so it? You, you is need whatever. To roll. You it, need to roll, yeah. I need to roll. That's going to be a, a inspiration time. <laughs> <laughs> That's better. Okay, so I rolled a 19, so I would add my my arcane. Yeah, no, you you, ca- you can't spell her, and she's okay. not happy about that. So feeble mind, you said. Feeble mind, yes. So it's a uh, what save? Charisma, please. That's going to be uh, 29. Fuck. Damn. We tried, buddy. We tried. That, we was a good, that was a good call, though. Very nice. All right. Okay. Interesting. Is that our Tagen's oh, turn? Oh, he's got he's got lots. He's got lots? <laughs> oh. he's, he's got... That was one. He will use his movement to move mm-hmm. to where she is. Mm-hmm. Which I am not on the same screen. So. Oh, wait, well, it's me... I have a token here too. Yeah. Wait, well, you might not have control. Oh, have let me correct that right away. Is it a little bit of bookkeeping for Hayden? Is he was on the first floor near more when, like, when right. when right. stuff was kicking off? There you go, Kylie. Should be able to use that. And uh, yeah, Hayden is not downstairs anymore. There you go. Cool. Uh, so with that. <laughs> He is going to uh, pull out his copy of The Maze of Smacking, uh, which in this case is called his Fool's Scepter, Mm -hmm. and he's just going to hit her. Even though he used his action for the Feeble Mind? He can attack three times, one of which can be a stab. Interesting. Go on. Uh, That would be a 25 to hit. Yeah, that hits. Five, ten, fifteen, sixteen, twenty. 16, 20, it's going to be 24 points of bludgeoning damage. Okay. And he is going to then, for his final attack, use cantrip. Um, nope, that's not the touch. He is going to use, I always confuse Chill Touch with the other one. Mm-hmm. Shock and Grasp? Yeah. Mm. Which I think he has. He does. He's going to use Shock and Grasp. Bitch. Ooh, not good. That's going to be a 14 to hit. That does not hit. Cool. Does she maintain her concentration on invisibility? Yep. Cool. Oh, cool. That is all he wrote. All he wrote? All right. Uh, it is not Henry Stern. He did not appreciate Artbeck show of force. So what he's going to do, you see him grasp his weapon, his like, short sword and just whisper the word Misericorde. And you see the sword grow, grow the hilt itself. It starts to grow immensely, just leaving the blade at the end. And he's now holding a jet black halberd in his hand. 
uh, that he's going to use to attack Outback. Um, uh, four times. So that is going to be first attack. That's going to be a 26. Hits. Second attack, 29. Third attack, yes. uh, that's less good. Not 26, that's still good. And fourth attack, ooh, that's bad. That's going to be 22. That misses. Misses? Okay, cool. So, uh, for the three attacks, that's going to be... Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, 17 on the first one, slashing. Uh, 18 on the second one, 14 on the third, and he is going to. Mm. Mm. Yeah, he's going to action surge and attack you four more times. That's going to be. Uh, ah, fuck you. 18. Nope. Uh, 23. Uh, meets it, beats it. Okay. My AC is 23. Okay, 26. Yep. And the uh, natural 24, 34. Yep. Crits don't count. Admin team play. Okay, all good. So first one is going to be uh, 11. Second one, 11 as uh, 16, sorry. And third one is going to be a mere nine. And <coughs> <coughs> yeah, that is going to be his turn at the moment. Uh, yeah, okay, Arthur, you're up. Okay, uh... Bonus action, Artur is going to speak the command word. The shield is going to float off his back and now start floating around him, so he has his shield. Um, okay. With his dual wielder, he'll draw both his hand, his Matalatok and his Morningstar, and he's just going to go to town on Hen on uh, Henry, because mm -hmm. he's not on Re anymore, he's Henry. Um, <laughs> Thank you, even. So uh, he's going to attack three times, so just so you're aware... Every one of my attacks with the metal attack does a blast of 30 feet. Everyone within 30 feet except my allies takes cold damage. Okay. Uh, if I deal cold damage to any creature, mm -hmm. uh, they lose 10 feet of movement. Mm -hmm. uh, and if they're reduced to zero, they are considered restrained. Okay. So first hit, uh, I have advantage because flanking. Mm -hmm. uh, 31 to hit. That hits. Okay, second hit. Uh, 30 to hit. That hits. And third hit. 32 to hit. Yeah, that hits as well. Okay, so that's... Uh, we do some... And 22. 31 points of bludgeoning damage. Okay, he's going to use a superiority die to reduce that by uh, 16. Okay. So um, then, how much is that then? 31 minus 16, so, so 15. 15. Okay. And then everyone in a 30 foot radius of him, so that'd be the three guards and Henry. Mm -hmm. uh, take. 22 points of cold damage, and all of them have their speed reduced by 10, uh, 30 feet each. Okay, the guards are gone. <laughs> <laughs> but he's doing okay. Um, the, okay, uh, I can only do that once. Fuck it, yeah, I'll action surge. Mm -hmm. We're all gonna do it, we're all, we're all gonna do it. So, uh, three attacks again. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is a 24 to hit. That hits. Right. Uh, 26. Hits. Oh, and well, actually, hang on. I gotta, I gotta 
read real quick. Hang on. Oh, okay. Um, and 29 to hit. Hits two. Okay. So. Oh, whoops. I roll. Wrong dice. Wrong dice. So that is 12. 21. Uh, 31 points of bludgeoning damage again. Uh, this okay. is all magical, by the way. Okay. And. 38 points of frost damage. And his speed is reduced by an additional 30. Okay, nice. So he is, uh, I assume, frozen to the ground at this point. He is. He uh, actually, really you know what? On that last hit, too, I need a strength saving throw, please. Strength save, all right. Mm -hmm. That's going to be 24. Yeah, he saves. But he is momentarily uh, enveloped in fire as shackles shoot out from the hammer. Ooh. I've just got to find the damage die. Give me a second. 2d6. And he takes six points of fire damage. All right. <laughs> that was a turn. Uh, and your if, turn? He's a, if he's resistant to fire, he takes uh, damage. Anyways. Okay. Good to know. Is that your turn? That is my turn. Okay. It is now <clears throat> the guards. Whoever is left. Uh, they're going to barge into the room. Uh, both of them are going to uh, shoot an arrow towards uh, Morwen. Uh -huh. That's going um, to be. Can I see Morwen by chance? From way through the windows, you can see part of her. Yeah. Okay. So first one, uh, first arrow is going to be natural one. Second arrow is going to be nineteen. My AC is 18, yeah. Okay, so you take... Okay, you take 12 points of piercing. And those fuckers are going to... 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and dash. 6. Same for this guy. Uh, this guy is going to... Even while dashing, he cannot do shit. And upstairs, <coughs> they're going to both go there to the um, to the balcony and, as well, shoot two arrows at uh, Morwen. Yeah. Uh, twenty-one and uh, tw dirty twenty. Okay, so that's 11 and that's uh, 7. So 18 total? 18 total piercing. Okay. That's all they wrote. Indigo. Hello. <laughs> you are charmed at the moment. Uh, yeah, and I was yeah. told to attack my friends, but yeah. I don't see any. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> uh, so I don't really know what I would be doing. You would probably not be doing much. No, because we're we would probably be also probably closer to the middle of the room because we went towards each other, so we mm -hmm. wouldn't be in that corner there. Mm. So we're probably somewhere around there. Yeah, sounds good. And I was told to attack my friends, mm -hmm. and I don't see any friends in this room. Okay. And so I, I also don't know that Indigo would think that they could exit the room because the door slammed behind them. Mm -hmm. So what do I do, big DM, scary <laughs> Toussaint lady? Mm. I could cast something to make myself harder to hit, like, but I can't attack anybody that I don't see. Yeah. If you want to to do so, make yourself harder to hit. It doesn't hurt, it doesn't go against the the word. So yeah, knock yourself out. I cast. Uh, it's it's basically a version of Arbor of Agathis, mm -hmm. but it's actually called Titania's Blessing. Nice. <laughs> so I have. Shimmery armor. Shimmery armor. All right. 
Okay. And I guess it... that's my turn. Can I try to break the charm or no? Yes, you can try. It's another wisdom save. Okay. Okay, uh, that's a 23. 23? Yeah, you break free. Okay, but I'm still goo goo eyes for this Lady Toussaint. She's beautiful. Mm hmm. Give me a deception check then. Okay. <laughs> you just said some beautiful words to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, how does a. 35 treat you very very not good okay but okay wow she's really hot have she's you seen so those hot, knockers man. she's <laughs> so hot okay Aiden Aiden will uh can we move back to the other floor because that is the floor that Hayden was on I yes just... we can couldn't do that myself also my token that I moved to where I am uh disappeared I guess right there. Yeah, okay. Uh, one second, friend. Uh, Hayden, da da da, there you go. You just appeared. There. So I will action, leave mm -hmm. the ethereal plane. Good call. Check a quick distance here. Oh, perfect. <laughs> I'm gonna oh. step over to there mm -hmm. to get some flanking with Hardigan. Mm hmm. Which means I need to roll one more thing because I pre-rolled everything. Doesn't change anything. Uh, and I am going to action, or I'm going to bonus action, cast Ensnaring Strike. She already used her reaction. She cannot counterspell unless she has something else. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'm going to swing at her twice with my glaive. Uh, a 34 to hit. That hits. All right. Uh, so that's 17 slashing damage, and I need two strength saves. One DC 18, one DC 20. Uh, first one fails, second one succeeds. Man, she succeeds on the 20 and fails on the 18. That is not what I expected, but Me I am either. still happy with that outcome. <laughs> uh, vines wrap their way around her, and she is restrained by some, okay. some very pokey vines. Uh, and then I will... Attack again, that's a 35 to hit. Yeah, that would hit, for sure. For 13 slashing, and I need another strength save. Okay. Uh, that would be... Uh, 21. <laughs> She's been lifting, yeah? Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but she is restrained, and at the start of her turn, she takes uh, some piercing damage. Okay, just remind me when it's her turn. Thank you. Yep. Morwen. Oh, hey. Uh, Morwen is going to cast a Draconic Transformation. Nice. Gives her blind sight. Mm hmm. And a breath weapon. Nice. And <laughs> she's. she's gonna position herself so she can do a 60 foot cone to target like all of these guys up in here okay just where however she needs to be where she can get them from where you not... are i think it, yeah that makes a like a pretty good cone okay so i need a deck save of dc 20. Ooh. fails Succeeds, fails, succeeds. Jesus, fucking roller coaster. The ones who fail take 30 uh, force <laughs> damage. Yeah. The, the, and the ones who take 15. Yeah. So this one is gone. This one is gone. This one is not doing well. And this one is not doing well. Reaction she's going to turn to um, Juliet and Link. <laughs> mm. Because okay. that was the, the best one is my bonus action. Reaction wink, no problem. Okay, that brings us to Jean Lugage. Oh, hey. And I hey. help. Hey. Um, Jean Luc, hearing uh, what is going on in the room, um, is going to make his way inside. Mm hmm. Uh, 
Uh, and evil she looks silly. shocked at you right now. Like, there is... Can, can you give me an inside check, please? I can certainly try. Probably not. Uh, inside. 17. 17. There is definitely anger in her eyes right now. But there is the faintest hit of sadness behind that. Carry on. I love my also, uh, Lionel, I think she'd be beside me still, right? Oh, yeah, right. You are absolutely correct. Let me correct that mistake immediately. There we go. And Indigo still looks like Jean-Luc. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With a shimmering armor. <laughs> uh, Jean-Luc is going to say, Hello, Marman. I have been waiting for this for a very long time. And just thrust their hand out and cast a guiding bolt at third level. Okay. Ooh. Uh, 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 25 to hit. Oh yeah, that hits. Of the D6 is 6, 12, 18, 20, 27 points of radiant damage. Okay. And she be glowing. She be glowing indeed. Uh, DM, do you house rules the same as Jax? For the. Um, for as what? As far as cantrips. Yes. Cool. Uh, so here, that was radiant damage. He is then going to say, Oh, and for whom does the bell toll, my man? And mm -hmm. cast all the dead. All right. I need a wisdom save, please. Yeah, that's better. That's better. That's going to be... Ah, uh, not oh, necessarily God. better. That's going to be only 21. Oh, only 21. Yeah, that's fine. She's good. Okay. The bell does not toll for her. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. Just as a note, uh, another ruling that I do uh, is about uh, casting multiple spells in the same turn. Uh, there is this like bullshit about like, yeah, you, even if you have one action, one that is action, one that is uh, bonus action, you can only cast one spell, or the other one has to be a cantrip. I let people cast spells. If you have one that is bonus action, one that is action, you can oh. cast. But that, that's just my my ruling. But... Personal. Good to know. Okay. Merci. Is that your that's turn, Jean? That's all. Wonderful. Not big. Um, <clears throat> sorry, I was muted. So, Not big is. Not big is going to bonus action, uh, cast Shield of Faith on himself because mm -hmm. AC is now twenty-five. Okay. Um, then he's going to get to attack in Seeker. Mm -hmm. um, that's a 38 crit. I actually forgot to do something with my last crits, but that's all right. I'll do it this time. Okay. Um, so the crit, crit is cancelled. Yep. That is 22 slashing okay. 8 radiant. Okay. And I need a wisdom save, please. Okay. Ooh, that's not great. Ooh. Wisdom save? That's going to be an 8. Ah, yeah. Um, Henry is paralyzed. Oh, nice. From paralyzing presence from uh, Seeker. Interesting. So he's paralyzed for a minute. And you can make the save again at the end of each of your turns. Okay. Um, the next attack is a 30. Mm -hmm. Well, that hits. He cannot do anything anyway. So, so this makes them all crits, doesn't it, really? But that doesn't matter. Mm. <laughs> or does... No, that doesn't. Does it? Does it? I mean, the crit doesn't work any better. It's just that, like, he's... Okay. You can hit all good. Okay. So it's 22 slashing, 16 radiant. Okay, hold on. 22... And 16, okay. And then 26 slashing, 6 radiant. Okay. 
so sorry, I forgot to say on those first two hits, there was divine smites in there as well. Oh, of course. Um, but but that was the radiant damage. I, I so expected I as much. Lumped it, I lumped it all into one. Um, then he's going to action surge for the second time. Yay, level twenty fighter. Okay. <laughs> um, thirty six crit. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Eighteen slashing. Okay. Two radiant. Okay. And there technically would be another whiz save there, but he's already paralyzed. Yeah. He's like um, very paralyzed. A, yeah, and then a 29 to hit for 29 slashing. Okay. And four radiant. Okay. And then the last hit is a 17 slashing and four radiant. Okay. And that completes my turn. I sure hope so. And just for the <laughs> just for the people at home, that was 174 points of damage that turn. Yep, I felt that. I felt that very much. Okay, so since that's your turn, <coughs> it is now uh, Juliet one. Uh, yeah, she did not appreciate that one bit. Which uh, one is Juliet one? Is the, that one, the one? The one on, on the lower floor, floor, like between Atag and, and Hayden. All right, I'm going to invoke the stone giant rune. Uh, she does get advantage, uh, or it is a charm effect, whatever that has to do with her. But uh, as a reaction at the start of her turn, I can make her make a whiz save, DC 19. If she fails, uh, she is charmed and basically can't do anything. 22. 22. Sorry. Succeeds. Okay. Yeah, well. So what she, she is restrained and takes nine magical piercing. Nine magical piercing. Okay, sounds her. good. Sounds very good. Okay, she is now out of patience. Yeah, okay. So she's going to use quite a bit of sorcery points to twin a spell. No, no, no. She's just going to use a few sorcery points to saddle spell. And she's going to go to Morwen with an eight level disintegrate. I would like you to make a dex save, please. You muted. It's not Dexy. How much was that? More what? No, I haven't rolled yet. Oh, okay. That's not good. That's uh, twelve. Okay. Inspiration. So... I think I should use it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's twenty. Twenty-five. Twenty-five. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Uh, uh, so you don't even take half, so that's bullshit. I know. I hate that spell. <laughs> that's bullshit. I'm not happy about that. Um, bonus action. Yeah. Can she cast spells with somatic components while restrained? Uh, since she cast subtle spell, she did not need any somatic component anyway. I, I know for disintegrate, but if mm. she's trying to cast another spell with her bonus action, I don't think so. Uh, well, would let me that see. One, unless she earns more points. Let me see right away. I think it would be a. I think it's DM fiat whether that is. That's what the I'm case gonna check. It doesn't say specifically in the rules. I mean, she's restrained like on the ground, so like. I wouldn't say that it prevents her from doing somatic components on this one, because I also need a sh I also need to have a shot at like killing you people. Okay, uh, so yeah. then we'll just switch spells yeah. after this. The subtle was just so Morwen couldn't counter, probably. You couldn't because yeah, you couldn't see that she was casting right. a spell, so no counter spell. Uh, but yeah, she is going to bonus action Missy Step. And go somewhere else. 
but she's not restrained. Mm. It's going to go up here. Okay, so that was Ju Ju Juliet 1. Juliet 2, going back into the office. So, yeah, she's not happy right now. She so. still thinks I'm on her side. Yep. So, what she's going to do is she's going to use quite a few sorcery points uh, to make, uh, to quicken the spell. Uh, so two sorcery points, that's, that's enough. <coughs> and she's going to bonus action, uh, where is it? Where is it? Wait a second. Fuck, I had it. Yes. Um, Jean-Luc. Could I get, please and thank you, uh, charisma save, please? Twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. Okay. So that was her bonus action for nothing. That's great. Um, yeah. So she is going to. She's going to try to disintegrate uh, Indigo. At this point, she does not want to uh, hit John Luke at the moment. Uh, Indigo, I need a deck save, please. And I know I'm going to regret that, but <laughs> I have to ask. Does a 17 serve? No, it does not. I have to... I don't remember... Because I have evasion. Mm -hmm. So... I only take half damage, even if okay. I'm hit with something. Okay, no problem. So, uh, I'm not going to roll physically because that's too many dice. So that's going to be 77 points of uh, damage. Okay. Reduced to 30... 34? 33? Uh, no, 38, 38, 38. would be 35. Yeah, 38. Yeah, it would be 38, 39 if yeah, 38. you I think we are done. Um, and she's still next to me? Yes. Oh, also, I wanted to ask a quick question. Sorry. Yes. Temp points don't normally stack, right? Nope. But if it's something like Armor of Agathis, does it still count on top of what's already there? Well, Armor of Agathias gives you temporary hit points, so it would not stack. Yeah, so it would it's be not like stacked. Big, no, it would be the biggest one is there. Yeah. Okay, so I take... How much? 34? It was 30, uh, 38. 38 damage. Mm -hmm. But because of my armor, mm -hmm. she would take 10 points of that as Radiant. Interesting. Okay. Okay. Is that your turn? This is her turn. Well, it was her turn. Yeah, I'm stupid. <laughs> Artagan. Artagan. Well, he's having a grand old time. Um. He is. He's going to say, "Oh, darling, I don't think you can go quite yet. I'm not quite done playing with you." Uh, he is going to. Um, at 6th level, mm -hmm. point up at her and mm -hmm. cast Chain Lightning. Chain Lightning, interesting, okay. Uh, I need her to make a Dexterity saving throw, please. Okay. No, 4. And, and her friends, the Jean-Luc? Yes. Ardigan? Yes, her friends will also need to make 
the saves. Uh, the friends are doing 18 and 21. Uh, 21. Save is 22, so no. Okay, so none. Cool, 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 cool. This is going great, you guys. Holy shit. 10, 20, uh, 57 points of lightning damage. Gosh darn it. Okay. Is that our target's turn? That is his first attack. Yeah, um, I figured. His second attack is going to be... Um, he's going to switch hands mm -hmm. uh, and cast a madness bolt at her. Interesting. Uh, probably not. 19? Nope. Cool. Cool. No, hold on, cool. hold on. Uh, it was like a, uh, against her AC? Yes. Yeah, no, that hits. Oh, cool. But uh, she's gonna counter spell that. It's it's a ranged attack weapon. Oh, okay, never mind. I thought it was like a spell or something. Okay, all good. Um, 5, 10, 15, holy shit, 3 fives, 3 sixes. So 15 plus 18 is 33 points of psychic damage. Okay. And I need her to make a wisdom save 22. Okay. Gladly. Nope. On a fail, they become quite mad and spend their next turn babbling incoherently to themselves. Great. Cool, cool, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. And that is our target's turn. Wonderful. Uh, it is now Henry's turn. <laughs> so, he can't move. So that's something. <laughs> he can't so, do shit, man. No, he can't. But... He can make a save again at the end of his turn. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, he's paralyzed for fuck's sake. Uh, what was the save again? 18. Uh, the stat. What, uh, what, ca what characteristics? Oh, wisdom, sorry. Wisdom, okay. Uh, that is a... Dirty 20, fuck. Yeah, it's 18. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, oh, I thought it was 21 for some reason. Okay, well, at least he saves, but uh, that's his turn. <laughs> Great. Do, do, would would the uh, other crit have stacked and just be waiting in the wings? <laughs> no, they would not. No, no, the crit is still not working, man. No, no, there's there was two crits in that in my last attack. One yeah. of them paralyzed him, and then there was another one. So I'm. Oh no, 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 no! He was already paralyzed. You cannot like par like super paralyze someone. <laughs> nah, nah, come on. Come I just on. I gotta ask. I gotta you you ask. had to you had to ask. I understand, Artur. <laughs> So I need a. I have a clarifying question that yes. I need. Um, I, I took the grappler feet, so I, I can do all that now. Um, grappling takes an attack action, but I can't do three attacks because I'm using my action to grapple rather than attack. Is that correct? Yes, it is. Okay. Okay, that's fine. Um, he melts, by the way. The he's he's no longer frozen in place, so that's. Although that's you good could hold him. on, if you grapple, you could still do like an arm on an arm strike, like. Headbutts or something. Oh, I could. Yeah. Or oh. what? No, nope, grappling just replaces one of your attacks. You just need to have a free hand to do so. Oh, okay. Cool. 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 I'm gonna use my right hand to grab him, mm -hmm. and I'm going to attempt to grapple him. Uh, contested athletics or acrobatics, whichever you want for him. But all right. Twenty-six. 31. Okay, so he's grappled. So I've got him got him grappled. Um, in a nice, booming voice. Uh, by the way, how's he looking? Mm, rough. He's looking rough. rough. Juliet Toussaint. He's just gonna boom that out. 
maybe rattle the windows, maybe break one or two, I don't know, to try to get her attention. Mm -hmm. And he'll make another attack roll, an unarmed strike, as his hammer disappears. Mm -hmm. And he will place his hand of devouring right over Henry's head. Interesting. Uh, if you'd like an attack roll, I can absolutely give you an attack roll. I would like an attack roll on this one, because he's going to not let that happen easily. That's a uh, 25. 25. Damn. Okay, yeah, that hits. And I'm just going to hold it there. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to close my hand around my other hand. Mm -hmm. Because she knows what that hand does. And I'm just going to hold him there. Um, and then bonus action because I have him. Why not? Ray of Frost. Okay. Because I have him, so I'll make an attack roll. Uh, it's going to be at disadvantage, right? Cause yeah, like because distance. Uh, like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I have advantage because grappled. Uh, yeah, so, so it's 16. straight roll. How much was that? 16 to hit. Does not hit. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> that's something. Nice little cold. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. And that's his turn. Yeah, it is now the god's turn. Uh, yeah, so... <laughs> the two gods who are up there... Mm, yeah. Uh, the one that is up here is going to just yell DEFENSE! And as he does so... Uh, the people who are downstairs, you can see that the beautiful armors that were donning the wall are starting to move. Now the second one is going to attack Hayden. Hayden, sorry. With an arrow, that's going to be a 21 to hit. It's... There's going to be uh, 14 points of piercing. Alright. And that's... Oh yeah, there's also this one. Like, he's very worried right now. Uh, he's going to... Toss an arrow at Artor. That's going to be 22 to hit. Uh, does not hit. Okay, so he's going to piss himself. And... <laughs> that is it for the guards. Indigo. Oh, hi. Um. Well. My dagger is back in my hand. Yes, it is. I'm going to... Oh, do I have advantage? You would. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna stab her. <laughs> okay, stabby, stabby stab. Does a 31 hit? Yes. Okay. That is 10 points piercing. Yep. Plus 6 points cold. Yep. And because I have advantage, sneak attack goes through. Indeed. Oh, and I rolled pretty good. 32 points of sneak attack damage. 32. Oof. Okay. And then I'm going to back up and I realize that she'll probably try to attack me. She would. She can try. She can try? Perfect. Yeah. So what she's going to do is... Uh, she's going to try to immolate you. I need you to make a dexterity saving song. I thought that an attack of opportunity was a weapon attack. It would if she had <laughs> if she didn't have Warcaster. Ah, so what do you need for me? A deck save. I know it's bullshit, but I have to try. Eventually, I'm going to. Make it work. One. Uh, it's not good. It's a fourteen. No, that does not save. Fantastic. So, you take for starters. 28 points of fire damage. Sorry, Ooh. sorry, sorry. I can add some shit to that. Yeah, I, I, 
if just give me all of the damage at once, and then I'll divide it by two. Yeah, let me just check that. Uh, okay, H how many did I tell you? 28. 28, okay, so it's done. And... Uh, right two. Okay, so, uh, so th uh, 32 overall fire damage, and you are mm -hmm. on fire. Okay. And these magical, th these magical flames cannot be extinguished by non-magical means. Okay. Um, but that was the full damage? That was the full damage for the initial impact. At okay. the end of your turn, you're going to have to make a, another save. Okay, that's only 16 points of damage then. Okay. Uh, that's fine, but I still have my my bonus action, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Eldritch Blast. Eldritch away. Does a seventeen hit? No, it does not. Okay. Does a six uh, twenty-seven hit? That it does though. Okay. Does a 24 hit? 24 does hit. Okay, and one more. Does a... Ooh, 18 doesn't hit, does it? It just hits. Okay. So that is going to be three successfully hit her. So that's 15 points of force. Okay. Plus... 10 points of force. Okay. Plus... Ooh, yeah, another 15. Okay. And as a free action, hmm. I'm on fire. Um, I don't know. Does it spend an action to drop Disguise Self? Oh, uh, no, I would say that's free. Okay. Free action... Indigo on fire just mm -hmm. drops there themselves. They look at her and they grin and they go, We're gonna kill your husband. Okay. <laughs> uh is that the end of your turn? That's the end of my turn. I need another deck save, please. Okay. Because of the fire. The fire does a twenty-seven save. Yeah, it saves, so you take half damage and the spell ends. So you take only 8 points of fire damage. I don't take any damage, because if I save on a deck save, I take 0. Wonderful. I am happy about that. Hayden. Before Hayden's turn, yes. our tag would like to use a legendary action. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> just, Just so you know, though. I was not aware that you would be bringing a Tagen with fucking legendary action. I would have tweaked the battle a little bit differently, okay? Okay. Go I on. I will refrain from legendary action. No, do it. Do it. At this point, might as well. What is um, the legendary action? He needs... Uh, he's going to look at um, this one. Mm -hmm. Is Well, might not be a creature. We'll see what happens. Um... And he will try to beguile it. So a charisma save. Charisma save. Okay. It says it's like a creature against a creature. Can target one creature. Yeah, it is a construct. I don't know if it counts as a creature. Fuck. Well, I've learned that now. Well, that's 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 just karma. Okay. <laughs> Hayden. Hey, perfect timing. Uh, is. Is this Juliet in in the lobby, or is she up the stairs? She's up the stairs. Okay. Caden will uh, bonus action and invoke the... Uh, I believe it's the... You don't know which rune it is, uh, but... Um, gives me plus two to all ability checks and saving throws using strength of con. Uh, and then I'm going to run up the stairs and follow her. And mm -hmm. then I'm going to, at my feet, cast Silence. 
or at okay. her feet to cast silence. Okay. Nice. And then that is turn, because that's action bonus action movement. Okay. Well, that's good. Morwen, you are up. Okay, I am uh, kind of bonus action. Uh, get Juliet and these things in my 60 foot cone. Mm hmm. So I need a um, deck save of DC 20. I think that would hit Hayden as well if it's hitting. No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. I'll move if I have to, to get. To get basically those three. I want to get Juliet. Okay. Well, you can either and get Juliet and the two guards, or like the two guards and the armor. Up to you. I want to get Juliet and the two guards. Okay. So deck save, you said. Mhm. Mm so for the guards, there's going to be natural one. Then a uh, dirty 20, and Juliet is going to be a natural 20. Okay, so she'll take half. Yeah. Uh, um, oh, I'm going to re roll them to the third point. Okay. That's 10, 23 force for the fails, and um, okay. 11 for the successes. That was my bonus action. Okay, well, um, for the boss in section, let me already her. remove some guards. There you go. Carry on. I can see her now since I have blind sight. Yes, you can. I'm going to point a finger at her. Mm hmm. <laughs> and say, die. And I'm going to cast um, Finger of Death. Interesting. So I need a con save of 20. Okay. Oof. Oof, 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 oof. That's going to be con save, you said? Mm -hmm. Ah, actually, I have pretty decent con. Uh, 26. All right, so she'll take half uh, 27 necrotic. 27 necrotic. Half of that or already halved? Half. It's 55 was the total. Okay, all good. <clears throat> and that's her turn. Okay, wonderful. Jean-Luc. Jean-Luc, blissfully unaware of all the other fuckery that's going on. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, sees Indigo on fire, sees all this going on. Not on fire anymore. Not on fire anymore, no. No longer on fire. Awesome. And we'll say he will approach mm -hmm. his mother and say, let's see how you like it. And he will cast Bitch Slap, uh, also <laughs> known as Inflict Wounds. Okay. Third level. Nice. Uh, that's an attack, right? That's an attack. Okay. Uh, 26. 26 hits. 5d10. Eight, 18, 18, and 6 is 24. 29 points of necrotic damage. Okay. And they will just stare her in the eye. Say, sometimes after a while, they get stronger and they come back and hit back. All right. Is that your turn? I think so. I can do a cantrip. Uh, I'm a sacred flamer, which is okay. a deck save. Okay. That's going to be 22. Yeah, you're good. Okay. Up big. Murder my NPC. <clears throat> so, I'm just picturing a giant holding Henri by the throat with his head mm -hmm. in his hand, 
And I can only but imagine I can only imagine his legs going ah, ah, like that. So Ardbeg's just going to attack at the lower half of Henri, um, focused fully on his mission of murder. Um, okay. So that's a 36 crit. Crit yeah. cancelled. Yep, crit cancelled, but still painful. 25 slashing, 3 radiant. Okay. And and a wizard save. Natural 20. No. Saves. Uh, next hit is a 29 for 22 slashing and 3 radiant. Okay. It's not looking good. And the next... And the next is a 31 to hit for 25 slashing, one radiant, and using Artor's fire rune, um, six fire damage. Okay. Bonus action, um, toll the dead. Mm hmm. So that is a. Oh, shit, what is it? A whiz save. Another whiz save. Uh, 22. Saves. That is my turn. Okay. Nice. So, uh, it is now Juliet 1, who is going to just babble incoherently, because that's all she can do. And, yeah, that's her. Now, for Juliet 2, however... Huh. Yeah. She looks at you, Indigo, with anger, nay, rage in her eyes. She is exceedingly angry, especially at the dimension of, like, you know, like, killing her husband and stuff. I'm good. Uh, can I make it worse and just tell her that, uh, guess what? He's probably already dead. Okay. She's going to free action, turn to Jean-Luc and say, is this really what you want to do to your family? Really? Just side with these strangers and obliterous all? Obliterous all? Are you feeling that disconnected to us? And uh, she is going to... Hmm. Yeah. Okay. She's going to risk an attack of opportunity from Jean-Luc. And move this way. <laughs> oh, the mace of smacking is out and goes for it. Okay. Really badly, though. Uh, that's going to be... What do I add to that? Uh... That's gonna be a 14. To 14. Hit. Okay, that doesn't hit. Okay. Well, in that case, uh, she's just going to get out of the way a little bit. And how much is that? Yeah, now she's going to remain in the room. Watch you guys like dead into the eye i need <coughs> all of you uh you you two i mean to make uh well, dexterity save please oh uh oh that's a 22 save that saves does an 18 save 18 does not however Okay, so she is going to cast Meteor Swarm in that room and try to take everyone with her. Don't you have to be outside for that spell? It appears is that not. just Okay, I'm confusing it with the comet scroll, yeah. I think. Yeah, it does not specify, so yeah. So that's going to be... Hold on, I'm definitely not going to roll it manually. Oops. There we go. Even my uh, computer lagged. So, uh, Jean-Luc, you take 62 points of damage. Fire damage. 
Indigo 31. I don't or take nothing any because, because I saved. saved. Yeah. So that's the thing. <coughs> and her form also takes a lot and she vanishes. Can I incite the vanish? Like, is that something I can do? Mm, give me an arcana check. Ah! You have advantage on him. <laughs> no, I don't. Why would I? Don't you have the storm rune? No. That's me. I oh, only that's took Jean cloud. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna try. Ooh, ooh, it's not bad. 18. 18. You have if spent that's a fail, let me know. No, no, that's a save. Okay. Oh, that, that's a success. You did spend enough time with Morwen to know how uh, Simulacrum disappears. We have talked about them because Zook hates them, I'm pretty sure. Also, the entire uh, okay. room is on fire at this moment. <laughs> Just saying. So. Okay. Does have a cup says this is fine? Our tag <laughs> Uh, uh, he is going to, he's going to look at this, the guard that mm -hmm. for some reason hasn't decided to leave them alone and go, oh, this is just boring, uh, and step up to him and smack him with the staff. Mm-hmm. Uh, 32 to hit. That does hit. Ten, fourteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen points of bludgeoning damage. Okay, it was on the armor, right? Oh, I was looking at the wrong screen. Sorry. Uh yes, it would be on the armor then. Okay, all good. Okay. <laughs> he will then it makes a fun noise, so he goes, well, that's fun. Let's do that again. <laughs> uh, 27 to hit. Yeah, the hits. He's the god of chaos. He's got to find fun in there somewhere. 20 points of bludgeoning. Okay. He's like, once more, but this time with feeling. <laughs> Uh, 22 to hit. That hits. Ooh, there are my sixes. Six, 12, 14, 15, 16, 21, 24 points of bludgeoning damage. 24 points, okay. Still up, but barely. Uh, and as a bonus action, uh... Nope, just kidding. Done. All set. That's already good. Perfect. That's all I got. Uh, it is now Henry's turn. So, is he, he's not done anymore, is he? Uh, he it, at the start of his turn, his oh, yeah. head is devoured. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Like, pretty much all the Henry in like, French history, his head is gone. <laughs> uh, uh, does this make me revolutionary? Yep. Okay, that brings us to Artor. Um, he's gonna look to the uh, inside there. Remove his hand, still holding on to Henry. Mm -hmm. um, can he see Juliet 1 from where he's at? Yeah, I would say yes. Like if you lean a little bit, yeah. Okay. Um, let me. One moment, I've got to read something. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Just got to double check. Oh, so. Bonus action. Uh, the air around Artor is going to chill considerably. Okay. He's going to look at Juliet, holding Henry's now headless and mangled body, mm -hmm. again in a booming voice. Mm -hmm. You're next. 
and he's going to fire uh, Eldritch Blast um, four times. Okay. Roll your attacks. So, uh, <laughs> ooh, that one might not hit. 16 to hit. That does not. That's even worse. Uh, dirty 20. That hits. And 27. That hits. So she takes... 10 points of force. Okay. And... What level am I? I am a level 4 warlock? No, but it goes up like that. It's, yeah, it's, it's your total levels. Yep. Uh, so she also takes... Is it? There it is. Uh, um, 10 points of cold damage, and her speed is reduced by 20. Okay. And that's going to be his turn. He's just going to kind of hold hold the body. Okay. He uses Worth... bonus action and action. Okay. Worth he... noting, she did not hear him because silence doesn't let sound out or in. But she saw it, though. Definitely. She saw it. Okay. It is now the armor's turn. <laughs> They're going to... Yeah. This one is going to try to slam attack uh, at Atagan. Whatever the fuck that's gonna do. Nope. Okay, second attack. Nope. Uh, the other armor is going to... Ah. Climb up the stairs, and he's going to try to like shove uh, the lady out of the way. She's not resisting, so I would say that like she pushed her. He pushed her, and uses the rest of his movement to go there. That is unfortunately his actions. Indigo. Hi. You're okay, but the room is on fire, though. Yeah. So, I suppose I should probably try to exit this room. <laughs> uh, because it's not like I have the capabilities to put a fire out. Unless I can suggest to the fire it goes out. <laughs> um, yeah. So, I'm going to go to this door. Can it open? It can. It's open. It's open and, and it's yell. very clean. I yell fire! Eat the fire! Uh, how, wide is, how wide is the silence area? It is a 20 foot radius starting from that square. Yeah, starting uh, from that? Okay. The square the armor is currently on. Okay, so Indigo, you yell but no sound comes out. Oh, would I have known that it was quiet when I was opening the door? I mean, not, not everything was quiet, but the moment you went into it... <laughs> okay, that's fine. I still have plenty of movement left. Um, so I'll... I've used some of it. I've used like 15. I'll mm -hmm. fly out over top of the... Yeah, the sound is better now. Yeah. Uh, and I'll yell, it's a fire in there! Oops! <laughs> okay. And yeah. then I can see Juliet one. Yeah. Uh, I will. I would say that probably like opening the door and everything that was an action, right? So. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just bonus action, which is Eldritch Blast. Okay, Eldritch Blast away. Okay. Does uh yes a twenty nine will hit. A. Mm -hmm. 18, you said, just hits, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, 17 just hits. Oh, okay. So, yeah, it definitely hits. Ooh, I do definitely miss one, because that's a 13. Ouch. And then... 22. So, I hit with three beams again. Mm hmm So, that is... 11 points of force. Okay. Plus... Nine points of force. Okay. Plus thirteen points. God damn it! Okay. 
And this free action, I say, is your husband dead yet? And that's my turn. All right, Hayden. Hayden is going to ready his glaive and continue swinging at Juliet. Uh, it has a 10 foot reach, so even if I'm a little off mm -hmm. from being on the stairs. Yeah, yeah. You, you can reach, no problem. Uh, and let's see what I get. Uh, that is a, a, I am using great weapon fighting on this. Mm -hmm. uh, so minus so, five to hit in order to get yes, a plus that 10. is a, a 17, which I believe you said just hits. Yep. Awesome. So I will pull that. I forgot to do a thing, but it's fine. I can just do it for my next attack. Uh, and I need a strength save from her. Mm, nope, 17. Yeah, that is uh, 30 points of slashing damage, and she oh. falls prone. Oof, she's prone. <laughs> and then I will attack. I will bonus action um, planar warrior this time mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. add some extra damage and stuff, and then great weapon fighting again. Okay. Uh, good thing I have advantage. There we go. That is a 26 to hit. Okay, that hits. Uh, uh, that is 42 points of force oh. damage, non-lethal, if it matters. And um, Let's see. Uh, let me double check my things because I have some other maneuvers that I might want to do. Uh, C or he, C, C or here. Okay. And I will, um, whoever, uh, I'll go with Morwen or since can can she see me? Can Morwen see me where she is? Since uh, I'm still on the stairs. Yeah, I would say she could see you definitely. Yeah. All right. Uh, she if she wants to, she can use her uh, reaction to move up to half her speed without attacks of opportunity. If she wants. Okay. That's your turn. Uh, yes, that is my turn. All right, Morwen. Alright, so with my draconic transformation I have wings, so I'm not using my mechanical ones, but I'm gonna okay. fly up. Um Let me put you next to her. I don't know how high I am, but I can fly my speed is thirty. Uh, so yeah. I wanna get up to where I can see her is she she's down right she's down at the moment yes um is she looking rough she's looking very rough yeah um note that you are in the area of silence at the moment oh no i i, I wouldn't have flown over to hayden just like oh like why can't i move my character i would have oh. just flown up Okay, just up and like uh, around here somewhere. So I can see. Yeah, just so I have like line of sight on her. Yeah, you would need to get a little bit like this in order to not be in the silence. Okay, just because she's prone and I couldn't yeah. see her. Um, but she's in silence. Yes. Which I probably would notice. Well. I don't want to kill her, and I don't really have anything to restrain her. I'm just gonna go ahead and do my my bonus action and try to get the the guard, the mm -hmm. armor, and my own of uh, force. So I need a, a DC twenty dex. Uh, Sixteen. Oh good, she's gonna take full damage this time. And the and the armor thing. The armor Oh I thought it was the armor, sorry. 
Uh, for her, oh. that's going to be uh, 21. So, for the armor, 24 force damage, and for her, 12. Okay, the armor is gone, and she is mm -hmm. at an inch of her life. Ish. Okay. Um... That was my bonus action. Oh shit, don't want to take her down? To be easier to transport. Like that. Okay. All right, I'm just gonna do, I'm just gonna do a cantrip. I'll just fire bolt her. Okay. <laughs> that one, we're gonna reroll that because okay. I think I have advantage. Um. You have advantage, but you have disadvantage because she's prone. No, I meant for, um, for, um, inspiration. Oh, okay. So I've rolled two of them. So I'm going to use my inspiration. I'll roll two more. Mm hmm Okay. That's, oh, that's double 18. So 31. Yeah, yeah, hit. yeah. It's so for sure. And, uh, 18, 27, 36 fire damage. Oof, okay. Ah, yeah. Okay. Jean Luc. So, with this room uh, engulfed in flames, flames coming out of the doors. In 5, 10, 15, and just in line of sight of Juliet, mm -hmm. out of this room that's on fire comes Jean-Luc, and as they're coming out, their hair goes back to the blue. And they see her, I'm assuming they're seeing her real bad. Yeah, she's like... She's she's bad. She's hurt. She's very hurt. I will pull out um, the wand of entanglement, mm -hmm. and I will cast it directly at her mm -hmm. while she's down to mm -hmm. keep her down. Okay. And she's in silence, so I can't say anything that she'll hear. Um. Okay. So I can't do that. Um, then as uh oh, nope. Yeah, I will use Thaumaturgy as my bonus action mm -hmm. to my voice boom. Mm -hmm. And I will say <coughs> Juliet, you are down. Your husband may be as well. Yield and we will have a conversation. Okay, give me a persuasion have... check. Intimidation or persuasion, depending on what you want. Mm. Even though she cannot hear you, she can still... Oh, that's right, she can't fucking hear me. Um, well, as soon as John Luke starts talking visibly, or like give, or like make, at least is it is indicated that they want to speak, Hayden will drop the silence. Because <laughs> you can drop concentration at any point, it doesn't need to be your turn. Okay, so she would hear that. Uh, persuasion is 27, natural 19. Okay. Good to know. Is that your turn? That is their turn. Heartbreak. Um. <laughs> right. Sorry, I was. <clears throat> um. Heartbreak's gonna swing out his bow and shoot this guy. <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> Go on. You don't look um, bashful, do you? <laughs> um, 18. 18 hits. 9 piercing. Okay, he's still up, but... 28 to hit. That hits. 
Eight piercing. Okay, so he went from urination to ruination. He's gone. Ah, oh. oh. pussy. <laughs> um. Yeah, what happened to limited casualties? I think that was said right at the beginning. That's, it's not really in our big vocabulary. Um, I don't remember. RB's gonna look at Artur and go gross, and then he's gonna move over here, which is his full movement, just to get a peek in the door and see what's happening, and that's his turn. Okay. It is Juliette's turn. She is looking. Her eyes are just doing back and forth between Jean Luc and where she saw her husband fall and she's sobbing uncontrollably and yet at some point she just catches her breath and look at you Jean-Luc straining the eye and she says this is all your fault you will always be alone and she will subtle cast disintegrate on herself As nothing is left of Juliette Toussaint, and half a body is left of Henri. Castle is back to its calm ish self. The armors fall limp onto the ground, and everything is calm again. What do you do? Everything. Artur, well, I, I assume he's speaking loud enough. Uh, Jean Luc, he's out here. Bring him in now. Consider it done. Artur will bring him in. And Hayden will toss Jean Luc the go bag. Uh, you might need more than 300 gold of diamond. I've got about 1200 on me from various folks. It's not supposed to end like this, but I am not responsible for her choices anymore. I will go to the body of Henri, uh, and I will cast a resurrection. Okay. Before you do, uh, Jean-Luc, <coughs> Do you mind if I take his weapon? I don't need him to come back swinging. Sure, we've taken everything else. I might as well take the last thing he holds dear to him. Consider it taken. Okay. Take away his weapon and you cast Resurrection. Resurrection. Okay. As you do so, you guys. I assume you watch over the scene. You can see in a very gross, very gross display, the head of Henri just forming again over his dead body. For a while, nothing seems to happen until you just hear this one gasp of Steve <gasps> wakes up in a jolt and looks around in a panic until he sees you and his eyes lock they are burning with rage and hate towards you what did you do sal merde what did you do what did i do what did you do for years i lived in this palace while you ruled with such an iron fist so afraid of what might come in. So afraid of anything that is different than yourself that when you tried to be a parent to me and I turned out different than you expected, you thought it okay to torment me, to put me through torture, to cause me pain that a parent should never cause their child. To the point where you banished me from my home, sent me to a place where I died and had to rely on my deity who brought me back who did more for me than you ever could. The plan was to come here and parlay. Your wife 
made the choice to end it herself. And so, we aren't going to give you a choice in the matter. You will be leaving this place. You will be leaving this realm to never return. The Toussaint name is done. Going forward, this will be Chateau en Violon. And you are not welcome. You no longer get the power to hurt people like you have hurt me and many others before. I hurt you? You have taken everything from me. You have taken my pride, my dignity, my name. You took my wife. She died because you existed. We should have... We should not have banished you. We should have killed you as an infant. As the deformity that you are. The monster that you are. Now everything that our family stood for for generations is going to dust. And all of that is thanks to you, Jean-Luc. So yes, go on. You don't need to banish me. You do not need to say that I'm not welcome anymore. I would rather that your monster of a friend eats my head again than to live a single second in a world where your mother does not exist. In a single, in a single second where, in a world where you exist. You are a disgrace. You are a shame. And you will be punished. Not by my hand, but you will suffer and everyone you care for. Mark my words. You will suffer. So all of, all of this is thanks to me. The end of your reign of terror, of your reign of pain and torture. Of my glorious reign, yes. You have no glory on reign. You are a monster. I am not alone. I come with friends. I come with a family. Friends. A family that I found and built for myself with no thanks to you. He looks at he looks around and his eyes lock on Indigo. You call that friends? <laughs> I call that family. You are you are impossible. You are I, I knew you were stupid. I did not think you were that delusional. Okay, rely on your friends. Rely on their empty promises. But one day, after a few centuries perhaps, you will see how alone you are. And you will see who of those friends are still by your side. And trust me, the ones who will not abandon you will be killed by the oak. I can guarantee you. They will die. Yeah. Now finish me. I cannot stand to see your face any longer. It is a mutual feeling. Uh, Jean-Luc will cast banishment to the nine hells. Okay. He does not resist a spell. How he vanishes in front of your eyes. We we might want to put the fire out, kids. I I didn't want to interrupt the moment considering <laughs> Kyle has to play Artagan and and Sean Luke, but I would assume that Artagan's probably waved a hand and the fire's just out, right? Pretty much. Um, I am, no, I am not actually, sure if Artagan would actually, actually no. not let the chaos, chaos happen. Uh, that's true. A chaos, I... B, they would not have left Sean Luke in this moment. Ah. So half of the estate is ablaze at this moment. It's not... it's over. I mean... I can start trying to put things out, but I don't think I can make it there. 
Right. Um, Jean Luc will pull out the fan. <laughs> and oh, that's not a great are, idea. Yeah, are, are you fanning I have some cold, have some yeah, cold things like, I can do. <laughs> just, just ray of frost, ray of frost, ray of you know, yeah, just constant yeah. ray of frost. As you as you try yeah, to put the fire away, you notice that in the garden, a few heads have popped out. Servants, guards who did not take their post yet, and they're just looking at the scene in shock. And all of them are just looking at you, Jean-Luc. What do you do? Jean-Luc will walk towards them. <laughs> Let me... I am Jean-Luc Ambulant, the rightful heir to Chateau de Toussaint. As the current rulers have been dethroned, I will be taking this room. I promise you, the indignity suffered here under the previous rulers will never happen under my watch. I promise this kingdom, Avaline, will become a place of acceptance, will become a place of care, and will become a safe place, a safe haven for anyone who needs them. If that is not something you wish to be a part of, you are free to leave. But for those that wish to stay, I welcome you with open arms and open hands. A few of the servants are talking amongst themselves. You hear whispers, you hear just like a general unease. A few of them just walk to the side and try to help with putting on the fire. Three of them, though, remain behind. And one of them look, looks you in the eye and says, the only indignity that ever happened in this house was today caused by you and your friends. Are you going to kill us if we try to go away? No. no. Then we, well then we shall leave. leave. It's a shame. This was quite a place. And the three servants leave. The rest of them help you out and try to get the fire under control. Which it does, eventually, after a few ray of thrust here and there. Press the digitation, just Press the digitation, like brick by brick. But, <laughs> yeah, the castle is heavily damaged. But, still standing. Only remains one thing that got completely ignored by the fire. Above Henry's throne is a stained glass presenting him and Juliet. Only the two of them. John Luke will pick up the mace of smacking and yeet the shit out of it. Clinch in thousands and thousands of colorful pieces of glass shatter everywhere inside the throne room. The stained glass is no more. Jean-Luc will look to his friends. Mon ami, that is not how I imagined things to go down. But I am grateful for all of you. You have helped me save my own, my kingdom. We have righted the wrong centuries in the making. It will be a difficult thing to rebuild. But because of you today, we will do so. I, I cannot express my thanks enough to you for being here, for being my friends, for being my family. Morwen's gonna hug him, hug them at the earliest opportunity. <laughs> oh, man! I said I wouldn't do this. 
Uh, Jean-Luc will look to Artagen and say, Mon ami, we leave my home in your capable hands. Artagen will look around and go, Bitch, please, I've got this. <laughs> and Jean-Luc will, after checking with her one, say, Latrix. Uh, before you say that, Indigo would want to talk to Artagan. Okay. Uh, they'll say Artagan. You will be called very soon. You know to answer? With everything we've been through, do you really think I would ignore a call? Besides, that's just fun. Get used to carnage. I'm not asking because I don't trust you to do it. I just don't want you to think you were forgotten. Oh. All your attempts to help. I could never be forgotten. Have you met me? I'm fantastic. Yes, well. If you're fine here, I will see you soon. Redecorate little beard, but we'll see what happens. Have fun, kids. Don't let my, don't let my cleric get out of hand now, Calry. Uh, Indigo would wave and say that they were ready to go. Moron will blow him a kiss and say, bye, daddy. And as you utter the command word, you just bam out of existence and reappear inside the throne room. And the lady is waiting a little bit more eagerly than usual. Well, you are all alive. That is a relief. How did it go? Not as planned, but the mission was a success. Juliette made the choice to end her own life in a way I could not fix. Henri has been banished to the Nine Hells. That is quite definitive, in a way. But, as you said, the mission was, in a, in a weird way, a success. The objective was accomplished. What well, was to be expected with such a team? I hope you are My all lady. doing okay. It is also a rest now. I thank you for this opportunity. It's the least we could do. Charlie, could you stay behind for a second? After Jean-Luc. Oh. Oui, madame. Okay. Uh, the rest of you... Yeah? Yeah, uh, Arthur would leave when dismissed and uh, he would... Jean-Luc, we had an agreement when I uh, agreed to come and help, and he would brandish Henry's weapon. Consider it paid. Is that right done? Arthur will leave. Okay. That big's gone. All right. So as they all... One by one, leave the throne room. Jean-Luc, I know that this was a difficult task for you. And as much resentment as there was with your parents, I cannot expect you to be completely okay with what happened. So I just wanted to give you the opportunity to let it all out before going back into the world, if you need to. I should have expected something like this. I strive to be better than them. And in the end, I could not even protect those I sought to. I know in my heart what we did today was the right thing. I know it is a long road ahead of us. 
And I know things for me may be very differently, very shortly. But in this moment, in the way I feel, she's still one. She still got her last words. And I know, I know they are not correct. I know they are factually and objectively wrong. But they leave a mark on you. This mark does not disappear easily. But I am sorry that you had to experience that through this event. But it is unfortunately only one of the many hard choices you will have to do in the future. But I am pleased to say that you did, in my opinion, did do the right thing. As hard as it was, it kind of proves me that I was right to bet on you. Always bet on the one with the best hair, madame. Allow yourself to grieve. Give yourself time. But not too much. Merci. Merci. We have things to do. Artagan has stayed behind as arranged and will be protecting Aveline to make sure that Henri does not find his way back. And that... <laughs> I watched it happen in my own eyes, but it would not surprise me if the bitch found a way back. I would not be surprised either. But coming back to a realm that has been taken over by Artagan, oof. I am not sure he would not prefer the Nine Hells. <laughs> Get some rest, Jean-Luc. We have much to do time. soon. Oui. And Jean-Luc will turn and leave this throne room. And as you do so, this marks the end of the assault on the two sons. Congratulations, guys. I'm going to walk as a crab for the next few weeks. That was painful, you guys. <laughs> but yeah, thank you so much for joining on this uh, side quest. It was kind of a hard one, but uh, yeah, fun story. So you guys, uh, come so. meet us next week for the fucker like 24 hours finale that's going to be like yeah that, that that a lot of caffeine is going to be consumed on that weekend so <laughs> please come have fun and join us for the the next step in the meantime you guys have an excellent time zone we love you very much and uh, yeah have a good day bye, bye.